Welcome to the Tuesday Review. I'm Nathan. I'm James. And I'm Callum. And tonight we're talking Men in Black and E3. Men in Black International. Men in Black International, sorry. We can yeah. also talk about the first movie. Oh, we'll definitely talk about yeah, that. <laughs> um, yeah, Mib. Mib, yeah. Mibby. Um, yeah, I guess it's Mibby now because it's got the international. Yeah, so should we just get right into it? Jump right in. All right. Men in Black International, the fourth installment of the franchise. Although it feels more like a... Uh, it's a, a soft s- reboot. Like a spin-off kind of Yeah, video. It's, it, it, I mean, it's the first uh, without Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones, obviously. It's a sort of semi-soft reboot of the franchise with um, Chris Hemsworth as Agent H. And I feel like it did need to be rebooted, personally. Like, yeah, they, we'll, talk we'll talk about, about that. that later, yeah. but they, I don't think the sequels uh, did that well. No, no, so the original is like, still, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, they just kind of get worse as they go along. So and I feel like a reboot was a yeah, decent but they, idea. They went, we'll talk about it later, but they went in the, they did they went in the, the worst direction. possible way, which, yeah. So, anyway, Men in Black International, soft reboot of the franchise without Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Uh, Chris Hemsworth stars as Agent H, who's like a hotshot London, the, of the London branch of the Men in Black. He's like a hotshot agent and a new newbie agent, Agent M, played yeah. by uh, Tessa Thompson from the American, the New York original Men in Black branch. She gets sent to work with Agent H to... On know, probation. On a probationary uh, assignment to, you know, track down a powerful alien weapon, you know, boring plot. But the interesting quote-unquote part is that there might be a mole in the London branch of MIB. And so they have to find out who's leaking information to the evil aliens and so on. Molly, molly, molly. <laughs> molly, 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 molly. Um, so it's... So when, when I heard they were doing this movie, first reaction, like most people's reaction, just roll my eyes, groan. Wrinkle, wrinkle my nose. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then F. Gary Gray was announced to be directing it. And I really like F. Gary Gray. And what has he done before? He did The Negotiator, which is a really good, like, 90s action thriller. He did Fast and Furious 8, which is much better than 7. <laughs> much better than 7. Okay. Wrinkle my nose. <laughs> yeah. No, tr- they're trust not that me, bad. Trust me, when you watch the movies in order and you get to 7, you're like, what the hell do they do? And then you get to 8 and it's so ridiculously over the top, but it's so well handled. You can it's just a tra- see... It's a tra- they're a transition, yeah? yeah? So if you watch one and then watch no, eight, no, yeah. you're going to no, no. be like... But like in terms of the film, like seven is just a mess. And then eight is com- crazy, over-the-top, dumb, stupid. But F. Gary Gray is so good at directing it and the action is so mm-hmm. good that it's kind of like, oh, it's a step up. But anyway, he also did Straight Outta Compton, which is a really good movie. Um, so I was like, oh, that's interesting. Then Tessa Thompson, Chris Hemsworth... Liam Neeson joins the cast. Kamal Nanjani joins the cast. You know, I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Trailer comes out, looks like crap, obviously. But obviously, we saw it anyway. Um, Much like Thanos, it was inevitable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it <laughs> makes know, money in Hollywood, <laughs> it's inevitable. I have a soft spot for the Many Black franchise. Look, the first movie, as we were talking about last night, the first movie is one of the all-time great science fiction movies. I don't care what anyone no, says. No, that's true. It is a great oh. movie. Oh, we, we can explain on paper why it's so it's good. It's fantastic. Peak, peak 90s, yeah. practical, beautiful, yeah. well shot. It's, it's smart. This is a thing I was talking to you, Callum. The first one is smart. You know, like people, we'll talk about this later, but, you know, the way people look back at the Star, original Star Wars movies... And they all they think about is the lasers and the lightsabers and the the force powers, um, and so then they make these new Star Wars movies that are just lasers and force powers and lightsabers, but they don't think about what actually made the original trilogy good, which is the characters and the humor and the the, the story props. and the practical effects. And it's the same with Men in Black. People think of Men in Black and they go, "Oh, it was funny because Will Smith." And there was... It had alien had aliens. comedy and yeah, had, buddy cop Yeah, had laser movies. guns and aliens. And but at its heart, it was basically a buddy cop movie. Yeah, and then they reboot these men... You know, they make the Men in Black sequels and now they're doing this kind of semi-spin-off reboot. You know, and it's they forget what that the original, what makes it good, which is the yeah, characters, like the a, practical effects, the smart script. They take a franchise 
boil it down to its key visual elements, yeah. and then they just like spin, make spin-offs. That's with just like yeah. what the pop culture yeah. essence thinks. That's that's Hollywood's mo in a nutshell. Like that's what they do. It's like, oh, that was successful because of laser guns. Let's just make a laser sequel gun, or spin-off. Movie. Yeah, that has laser guns, and <laughs> people will pay us lots of money to see it. And and they know, do, and they do, and then then I don't have to actually think about making a good movie. Um, but anyway, Men in Black International, it's what you'd expect. It plays it way too safe. There's way too much CGI flippy floppy things going on everywhere. There's no, or very little practical element, that, you know, aliens or and anything like that. That was disappointing because there were some aliens that were so simple. Yeah. That's, visually simple. That's what shoots me about yeah. like 90% of modern day Hollywood movies is that some a lot of the stuff is unnecessary. CGI is unnecessary. Yeah. Especially, like, in this movie specifically, taking this movie's account, close to the beginning, there's, this is, you know, we'll leave this discussion for later in our spoiler section, yeah. technically, because I don't want to ruin anything for anyone. No. But there's a situation involving an alien fairly on, early on in the movie that's a little bit funny, and the alien's, pros- like, it really should just be a prosthetic, yeah, prosthetic green yeah. suit. It looks so simple, but yeah. it's CG. No, exactly. Or it looks to be CG. Yeah. And the same thing in the MIB offices, the Men in Black offices in London, New York. They're populated with these computer-generated yeah. aliens. That are flip-flopping the, around. The, the details, yeah. like a lot of them are humanoid, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then there's the simple ones that you could have just done with prosthetic makeup. And it would have been probably far cheaper just to get some clay, stick it on a guy's face, <laughs> and have him walk around the office yeah. instead of having him in a motion capture suit. And walking around yeah. and then doing it in post. I, th- I mean, CG is expensive, right? I mean, yeah. we, we all get this idea that there's an idea that people use CG because it's cost effective and it's you know you I just think have a at the end of the day it's it's not it's it it's always about the cost in Hollywood. But at the end of the day, it's just about what's easy. It's the lazy. Yeah, that's what I was going. That's and what I was also, going to get to. Even if it costs the same as prosthetics, yeah. it's probably easier for a it's, studio to go green screen because it's one less thing the director yeah. and all the people behind the movie have to worry about because they just shoot the film and then ship it off to wherever the yeah. CG studio is and they handle it. Yeah, It's also, it's we've talked about before how it's just accepted in the pop culture now. The general audience, they see a practical effect and even though it's fantastic and they think that looks old. Yeah. Whereas, and then they see CGI, which looks terrible, and they go, wow, that's cool, because to them, it's modern, it's fresh. Yeah. But in reality, it's the reverse. The practical effect will last forever. It'll look great forever. The CGI looks dated as soon as the movie comes out. Yeah, pretty much. Like, uh, reminds me of the Captain Marvel uh, CG yeah. and the Black Panther CG. Like, yeah, it's like terrible. CG that costs millions and yeah. millions, like but big bunch CG, yeah. and they still don't pull but it off. But in most reviews of Captain Marvel and Black Panther, no one was saying that looked terrible, you know, the CG. And gen- general audiences don't care, you know. But when you put the effort in to to do the practical elements, to do the fight scenes, it's why... <laughs> It's why Christopher Nolan's movies are so yeah, successful. Exactly. It's why John Wick is so successful because people respond to that. So the key, one of the things about Men in Black International is it's supposed to be an adventure because it takes place in multiple cities. Like it's an adventure yeah. that spans like you know more than one locale. So it would be so much better if they actually went to these places and actually filmed. And I know they did for some. Yeah. But there were moments during the film where I was like. They're very clearly on a soundstage. Yeah, they... They're, there's green screen everywhere. This doesn't look authentic. Yeah. Like, it's supposed to be Many Black International. Spend the money and they actually do, film in a yeah, foreign location. They do They do f- uh, go actually go to yeah, f- but, foreign locations and film there, but then, like most movies, then they cut into inside and to a set or whatever, or they cut to a, a separate location uh, inside are, that yeah, location. Yeah, but there are some scenes where it just felt yeah. so fake. But I think also, you know, globe hopping and all that, it takes away from, I think, what made MIB MIB in the first yeah. place was that not necessarily just being in New York, but that kind of it was gritty, very much a New York gritty movie. cop movie. So, yeah, yeah. look, we'll get we'll get into spoilers, I think, sooner rather than later because we're sort of already getting into the discussion. Around, yeah. So, Men in Black International, it's it's not terrible. I didn't hate it. I liked it. It didn't make me. And Nathan liked it because he's easy to please sometimes, <laughs> but. Like, it didn't make me feel icky like Men in Black 3 did. Like, Men that, in Black that was 3. was a bad movie. Don't Men in Black, 3. No, Men in what Black 3, at the time it, travel with the young agent. Oh, uh, yeah, I forgot about yeah, that. that was, ignore number, ignore yeah, 3. Yeah, 3, like, 3 made me physically feel dirty. 
this movie doesn't make me feel that, but it's just, it's bland, it's mediocre, it's mostly boring, it's very, very predictable. Um, oh. that, that's one thing I will say, they've reused yeah. some tropes. Yeah, and this, they, yeah. they play it way too safe, and as the sequel, like we were just discussing before, as the sequels go on, you know, they, they boil away what made the original great in the first place. And so what you get is a pale imitation of the original yeah. with a lot of CGI and, and, you know, modern music and people running around and it's just kind of meh. Yeah, I thought the script was very weak. Yeah, no, um, it, it, it's I mean, no, not, not good all at all. Of it. I, did, I did enjoy, like, the world building, like, you know, the MIB bases. Well, and so, but again, though, it's the like world the building is very screen. thin. It, you, yeah. the, the world building in the movie is very thin, and any world building there is comes from the original movie. Yeah, no, know? I mean, I enjoyed seeing what the what the bases would look yeah, like in yeah. different countries, but even then, it's like it just still looks so fake yeah. to me. Like, again, the script, I feel... Yeah, it's very I mean, weak. We'll, we'll detail exactly the problems yeah. when we go into spoilers. The, but man, it does. How many? It does. It takes one guy in the in the the team to say that's bad. Yeah, you know, like where was someone? I oh, mean, in the filmmaking team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like the, even but the writers' we, room. It takes look, one guy to committee. say, they "Look, that sucks. look." We 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 always go on tangents that could go on for another three hours. But it's the thing we always say of like, you know, people want to keep working in Hollywood, so they shut their mouth. No one's going to tell Ryan Johnson his script is trash, especially because he's just been hired by Disney to make a Star Wars movie, you know? No one's going to tell J.J. Abrams he can't reboot Star Wars the way he's rebooting Star Wars. Yeah, you but I, mean, I guess it's the same with MIP. Exactly. I mean, like, I, And I don't blame F. Gary Gray. I think he does an okay job with what he's got. But it's like, yeah, at the script stage, they should have been like, what's an interesting way to continue the franchise but they weren't doing that they're doing the typical hollywood thing is which is if they were just... smart honestly if they were smart they would have just kept it somewhat analogous to the first one to keep it keep some sort of thematic i'd say links to the first one and have like almost Look, like a standard reboot set people, in a different city people, that might work yeah i think i think that would have been better like just doing mib london yeah you know yeah. And and I think it also would have been better to explore how MIB London is different from the original MIB Lon- in New yeah, York. Yeah, exactly. London is an old enough city. It's yeah. cool enough that they could take advantage one of, of more. Yeah, one of the things I don't like about this movie is how, even though it's the central MIB, you know, London that's mostly part of the action, they don't really explore what makes that different from Yeah, we don't get to the see New the York. alien yeah. underbelly. I thought, we don't I get thought, to see the queen as a lizard. I thought would <laughs> Oh, why didn't, why didn't they do that? Why didn't they make that joke? <laughs> Send us a check. Okay. I, I was literally you know what waiting. We should, we, should get, we should get t-shirts that says send us a check. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll sell them on Facebook. Yeah, like um, I was waiting for that scene for pretty much the whole movie. Yeah. You know what they have like the, in all the Men in Black movies they have the screens and the bases with the ticket yeah. thing. I was waiting for a picture of the queen and yeah. like a lizard or something. Why didn't they do that? Yeah. But Reptilian. I think, <laughs> I think well, like what, what I wanted from the movie was if it's set in London and you're, you know, making this secret s- society of uh, agents who, you know, monitor alien activity. Um, we've already seen that the New York side in the original movies. Now we're in London. Why not do it like a Kingsman sort of James Bond yeah. kind of like, yeah, they're MIB. Like but cultural differences. Yeah they're, yeah, they're MIB, but they're English MIB. They're they more proper... Yeah. You know, they they do things in certain ways. There's a there's a level of uh, and they don't share information with the French many players. Exactly. Like, oh, there's a level know. there's a level of like classist, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, sort of slightly yeah. racist. Yeah, it's sort like of, that. Yeah. That would have been MIB. yeah, like this imperial yeah. kind of. thing. They go to Morocco and it's yeah. like it's just vaguely racist. Yeah, that would have been like re- like way more interesting <laughs> than what you get, which is just oh, it's just MIB, but in London, and then they run off to another country and shoot some CGI aliens. It's like it's, there's no interesting exploration of the world. Everything, like most modern movies, everything moves too quickly. There's very little tension, very little character build up. You know, Agent J, you know Will Smith's character in the original movie. You know, you see his journey to become a man in black, and in this movie, Agent M, who's supposed to be this young, inexperienced probationary agent, 
that's pretty much glossed over. Mm, like yeah. she just becomes a, she was a waste. There's character. a small yeah. There's a small introductory scene. Then she becomes an agent, yeah, and, and then look, she pretty much know she then makes a few mistakes, but she pretty much knows yeah. everything. She and needs and to you know. look at you look at you contrast that with the original. Yeah, and you have you know Will Smith, who's like the gritty. He was a he was a New York New York cop, cop right? Yeah, and then I just love his introduction to this other world. Yeah. And it's like that clash of yeah, of you, that he's le- but his learning process in the first movie is handled so much better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's like what they I, go that's through what the I, tests, they yeah. do everything else in this movie. Um, Tessa's it's character, just, yeah. a- a- M, Agent M, yeah. Agent M, small M. <laughs> um, uh, th- 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 like you see her, she does the tests, but you don't see there, her doing the tests. They just see her report card. Or whatever, yeah, there's literally like there's literally a montage with like hip hop music and her like choosing out a things and then yes you see her report card on the so computer boring. yeah and then it cuts to her being an agent like after, that, in my mind that like the epitome of that kind of scene yeah should always be will smith dragging the table yeah. across yeah, the yeah like room. see this is that, the thing. that's probably like that, that scene where like will smith is learning yeah. how to be an agent or doing and the test that's see, like my favorite part yeah, of the movie you see his streetwise you know snarky you know sarcastic kind of uh, contrast to all the stiff military men who are also taking the test in the yeah. first MIB, you know, and they're like struggling to write and on the paper on yeah. their arms and stuff. And that's why, and that's why he gets picked over the other guys because he's unorthodox. He can think outside the box. It's interesting. It's smart. It's funny. It's this she, movie, she just is, kind of conforms right yeah, into that. Exactly. This movie is the modern, boring, safe reboot version of that, where she's just like. Oh, you know, I figured out where MIB is now. I'm an agent. You know, there's none of that smart, funny, interesting struggle. There's none of that. Who is she as a character? I don't know. You she's, know? The, the epitome of her character is she's a smart lady with career goals. Yeah. Like, Look, we, 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 we should have gone into spoilers very far before we keep uh, delaying that. So we'll, we'll say don't bother seeing it with oh, Many no, Black no, International. No, no. <laughs> If Nathan you, says it's okay, but it's, go it's not see, good. Go see it if you can get a cheap ticket. I enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, it, it's not it's not uh, offensively bad. It's just kind of boring and bland, and a it's, little cheesy. It's fine. Yeah, um, yeah, but it's not not very good. Um, but yeah, we'll go into full spoilers now. This major spoiler warning for Men in Black International and the original Men in Black movies as well. But yeah, if you haven't seen Men in Black International, we're doing full spoilers. Spoiler warning: you've been warned. If we're jumping straight in, let's deconstruct some more stuff. Well, in the actually, story. well, first we'll tell the plot just yep. in case. Yeah. So, uh, like we said, uh, Agent H is this hot shot London MIB agent who saved the world and everyone loves him. Uh, agent M is this new American agent on a probationary assignment to help Agent H in London track down the mole and track down this alien weapon. Um, there's the this cosmic enemy called the hive that is trying to Pretty which stereotypical is so of sci-fi. boring and completely uninteresting and um, they're like in a war with the galaxy basically yeah they're trying to take over the galaxy i don't know not very just, well explained it's, yeah, it's really poorly yeah. done and they're trying to and break, they want the weapon yeah they're trying to break through uh some sort of interdimensional portal to earth steal the weapon in the eiffel tower uh, which yeah which is near the eiffel tower anyway they find out uh, where the weapon is, they get it, they get stolen, they track it down. They find out the mole is actually the boss of MIB London. <laughs> His uh, name is High T. High T, get High it. Treason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think of that. Yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, played by Liam Neeson, um, who was uh, who was taken over by hive. a hive yeah. alien. Um, and it's up to Agent H and M to take him down and get the weapon back and it's very boring. It's very predictable. It's um, a very has a lot of elements of the original movie just kind of thrown in. You know, I it's not very unique or interesting. It's not. I, I still had fun watching it, but it does have a lot of problems. Yeah. What I how I would fix the script or fix the story. Yeah. As we said before, I would keep it more just focused in London. Well, but I would also the fact that there's a portal in the Eiffel Tower and the fact that historically the English and the French haven't gotten along. <laughs> It, I know. Really, it could have been more of a diplomatic drama between that like, would be interesting between French men in black and English men in black. Yeah, when there's the English men in black are trying to be like it's mostly centered in London, but it's like look, this is the hive is coming. Yeah, they're coming for the Eiffel Tower, and the French are like no, no, yeah, no, <laughs> it's no. Like we need and access like, to your need, files. Yeah, so like, they, no. need, they need to break <laughs> into Paris. They need to break into France. Yeah, 
Like and basically elude the Frenchman elude, in elude black. the Frenchman in black. That would have been much and more like interesting. A, like a spy thriller, yeah, like a spy set th- the Men in Black. That's universe. what exactly. I, yeah. Like and the sort of the dynamic between. Well, what what it, uh, what did we say? We were making the joke last night about how if they wanted to continue the Men in Black franchise, they should have made a Logan. But with Will Smith, you know, <laughs> and <laughs> that would have been yeah. And then we were joking. Oh, what if they did a, a Mission Impossible four rogue, or five? Yeah. You know, like but with Will Smith. So Will Smith goes rogue, and all the MIB go after him. You know, like anything would be more interesting than what they did. No, but that, but yeah. using the the new cast and could the soft reboot element. Some some people would argue you can't do Men in Black without Will Smith. I'd argue that's not true. I would argue that's not true. But they like Hollywood. Like Hollywood's just not doing the right thing to continue it without Will Smith. I mean, it, it's proven that even Will Smith uh, doesn't mean it's going to. It be doesn't good. mean it's going to be a good Men in Black um, movie. So, I mean, I think that that sort of plotline could have worked a bit better. I think for mm. the movie, keeping it as like a, almost yeah. like a spy Look, movie. If they wanted to keep the same dynamic, they could always cast our boy uh, Donald Glover. Can you imagine, like if they wanted to replace that Will Smith esque character and well, yeah, that, that's a bit a, too too much dynamic, of a so. yeah, that's a bit too much of a copying. Like they're already copying bits from the original. Like that's a bit too much of a. But I also didn't like the dynamic between M and H. Yeah, there was no chemistry. This is, there. this is weird because Tessa Thompson and Chris Hemsworth are both really funny. Are both great actors. No, they're good. They're, they're, they're both acting both, quite well. They both have great chemistry in the Thor in Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. and yet here. Just like, nothing. I it's thought. A, I thought act, the acting on both the actors was fine. Yeah. I just. It was the characters. It, it, yeah. It's a it, testament to the script, isn't it? Exactly. It's. It's like. It's everything's so flat and like you know. That's it. Disconnected. And like I think the way that she was so originally sort of by the book, she almost was almost That's, blank. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There's like, also this. There's this trope in movies. I don't. It's probably got a name, but it's like professional women who are like, you know obsessed with their work are very logical and the hot guy who has to break them out of their shell yeah, yeah. it's a kind of oh. sexist trope in movies this movie yeah. it, this it movie tries with that yeah this movie tries to be woke by saying it's you know a female a man character agent and you know and she makes the joke like why is it called the men in black you know and then at the end he's like men and women are black and you know that was the only bit i laughed at you know and and it's that kind of fake wokeness yeah and but it also because the script is so poor, like it definitely flirts with that, you know, bad trope. <laughs> probably unintentionally. Probably, yeah, they probably yeah. didn't even realize. But like, I think I feel like vanilla is the wrong word. But she was very bland. Yeah, and I feel like he they they could have taken it in another direction with Chris Hemsworth characters H. Where like instead of making him a party boy, make him be really depressed and he yeah. just doesn't give a shit anymore. Yeah, like Thor well, in and, uh, <laughs> just yeah. remake Thor Ragnarok. Re- no, remake like yeah, <laughs> Thor from um in game. Oh yeah, yeah. But like have him be in this sort of stupor, and then she has to work him out of yeah. it. I guess instead of him being like that would be Life's a party. Like I mean, see, because the original movie has that older agent, younger agent dynamic. Um. Yeah, you you definitely start getting too maybe too close to the original, but yeah, I think that would be more interesting to have an older agent who's getting closer to you know getting disillusioned with the job, and then having a young, uh, starry-eyed rookie, um, not even kind of even re- be, reinvigorate. Doesn't his... even have to be an age thing because I, I I'm I'm sure that Chris Hemsworth isn't that much older than Tessa Thompson. No. It could just be more of a career thing. Like true, he's yeah, done yeah. everything so many times. He's yeah. tired. He doesn't want to be there. He's just burnt out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It might be he's burnt like a, out. Yeah, and he gets sent to this location. He's, he's like, or maybe yeah, they could maybe play into that rock star element of yeah, yeah he's the hotshot agent, but that's too much pressure. For yeah, like, him. like he like he yeah, when he's out I in public, like, he's like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. But then behind the scenes, he's like, let's just get. Yeah. With, I want to go home. I feel like this movie, they try to make the thing that, you know, Agent H is this hot, hot shot agent who saved the world. And so he's got a big ego now and he's, he thinks he's really hot shit. But they don't explore that well enough because the script isn't very good. And at the end, when you find out that Agent H didn't really save the world and he's been neuralized into thinking, tricked into thinking he saved the world. Um, and that's why he was, he's like, has that ego and that, you know, I don't think they, they didn't really explore that well enough. Mm, yeah. That would be really interesting, 
But the way the movie does it is like, oh, he's a hotshot party guy, but no, at the end, no, they find out. He should have found that out midway like, through the film. True, exactly. And then, and then I'm a fraud. Yeah, he, can, you know, he struggles yeah. with what does that mean yeah. Like, yeah. for me oh, as a person. Even mm. keep it a bit morose. Like, keep it like, yeah, he saved the world, but he only just made it. And he has some sort of, like, PTSD almost, and he has to work through yeah. it. Like, or maybe... Anything anything better than yeah. just the or sort of... Maybe they could have uh, revealed that uh, T was an uh, imposter in the middle of the movie and then H could have been like I didn't save my mentor exactly. you know my mentor is dead that crisis of faith almost yeah. and my father figure is actually an alien like you know there's, there's everything anything like we like they they play it too safe they, you know the, the script's not that good um, anything uh, any anything other than what they did would have been more interesting one of the parts of the movie I liked is that Tessa Thompson's character starts off as a kid and you oh, see, I know her. the scene we're talking about. Oh yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, the movie gets points for having. I'm pretty sure it was Purple Rain. Like, what other feature films think... has Morris Day been in? Well, <laughs> Under the Cherry Moon. Yeah, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, you're sure. Silent and Bob, <laughs> Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I think it might be Purple Rain. But yeah, the, her uh, Agent M Molly. When she's a child, her father is watching. Looks like Purple Rain, maybe. A Prince movie. As the Mo- Morris Day. And he's wearing a Prince T-shirt. Yeah. He's got like the Jerry curls or something. Um, and then he hears a noise outside. He goes outside. There's like an alien there um, that goes into Molly's room. And then the men in black come and neuralize her parents. So they don't remember. But she always remembers. And so she, her whole life she becomes obsessed with finding out who the men in black are and becoming a men in black agent. Um, and she kind of keeps her eyes on the skies. Um, and tries to join every government agency thinking that she can sort of work her way, work in. Her way into Men in Black, not knowing that the Men in Black are like a separate secret organisation. Um, that's interesting. Then when she finds Men in Black, that's when, uh, like I said, they do that montage, and then she's just an agent. It's too rough. And again, you don't want to retread the first movie again, but that's what's interesting the first movie did it so better, so much better too. Exploring her journey into the Men in Black is more interesting than, oh, now she's a probationary agent with the hotshot agent and they go around the world and you know, there's lots of CGI. You know, is, that stuff's boring. World building doesn't have to be a bad thing. No. And it's some, in my, a lot of movies, it's like the best It's thing the most movie. interesting yeah. part. It's, it's one like, of the reasons the first movie yeah, is so good. Yeah, because the first movie has a lot of world building. This movie, it's like, well, watch the first ones if you want the world building. But, yeah, know, this I mean, is we, just we, we talk about this all the time. If the if the original Men in Black movie came out today, mm. yeah, a lot of people would like it. But there would also be a demographic which would be like, this movie is too slow. Yeah, you exactly. know what I mean. Like when a movie takes its time to unwind everything and explain everything properly, some people will get bored. Yeah, that's why the new Star Wars movies are like, yeah, yeah. You but know, everything then, has to be now. It's like then, that no delayed grat- gratification. Yeah. you know what I mean. At the same time, there are enough jo- good jokes in the first one that it should keep most people happy. Yeah, like, I mean, it's... I still remember vividly the Bolchinian. No, that's the second movie. That's the second movie? Yeah. Oh, See, this is, like like, to... this is why you liked uh, Men in Black International, because you, you like Men in Black too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my point my, is I it's... retract my previous <laughs> comment. It's, it, it's, it's, it's the new trend in Hollywood for, yeah. delayed grat- for no it's, delayed gratification. Yeah. There's no... Why have a payoff that means something hmm. when you can just why, have 10 yeah. payoffs in very quick succession? Why, yeah. why, de- why develop the world and characters when you can just race to the next scene through action yeah. and on the surface level pretend you're building the world in characters by throwing out uh, trigger words, characters throwing out trigger words and um, music, you know, uh, changing to fit the mood of the scene. Yeah. It's The Force Awakens. People have probably listened to that old Force Awakens review, I, I'm going to upload it on the Tuesday review eventually. Um, but it's like what I said about J.J. Abrams. He's just like, he manips- manipulates your feelings for that two-hour period, but it's shallow. It's meaningless. When you actually, like, like there's no, there's actually no character world building there. It tricks you into thinking there is by, you know, oh, the music dips slow, this dips low here, so it's a sad scene. You know, yeah. You know, they're saying words that we don't have in English. That's world building, apparently. You know, like <laughs> there's, it's shallow. It's fake. Yeah. 
for the two hours you might be entertained, but it means nothing, and you'll forget it as soon as you walk out that's the true. cinema. And that's kind of what there were, I'll have to, one concession I'll make. There was no meaningful world building in this movie. No, um, any world building there was comes from the original. Props to our boy Jimmy. He just wants to see his kids, though. Yeah, that was one of yeah. the good. That that was someone <laughs> saw the joke that I liked in yeah, the original that was funny. movies. Like, yeah. oh, and, it's on a tabloid as well, and they have the tabloid yeah, yeah, yeah. papers. Yeah, yeah. Because like in the original, of course, yeah, uh, they usually use the, the tabloid, tabloid papers because yeah. which they're the truth. Actually, would have tied into the UK thing more because they they're known Daily Mail, Daily yeah, yeah. They're known for the that trash. kind of tabloid trash mags. Yeah, and it's like. That that would have tied, and with the whole royal family and like the, um, the royal baby, the new royal baby, yeah, like, has like scales. Yes, that would have been oh my the god, the photo they didn't want you to see. That yeah. would have been so good, like a stuffy British like spy thriller, but in the Men in Black universe, yeah, would have been so so good. Yeah, but you send know, us a check. Send us a check. <laughs> we we can fix these problems you have, like. <sighs> And we're pr- we're probably pretty cheap too, <laughs> yeah. as far as the rates go. Well, yeah, yeah. In terms of like Holly, what they're used to paying, we'll we'll take a we'll take a ten, <laughs> yeah, take take a discount. Um, but yeah, like yeah, it's that. It's the same with the aliens themselves. Not only are they ugly CGI, um, a lot flat, of them are lazy, flat, lazy. There, there's also that you know it's the same with the new Star Wars movies. Like in the original Men in Black, in the original Star Wars. Yes, there are aliens that speak English, but there are a lot of aliens that speak their alien language. There's a lot of subtitles. There are aliens that speak English but then throw in alien words. Um, and that's that's how you make a world feel real, feel alive. In the New Star Wars movies, in the new Men in Black, all the aliens speak English. There's no subtitles. And they don't, even, they don't even have a Babelfish excuse. Exactly, yeah. There's no translator excuse, yeah. So there's, it's, yeah, it's that kind of Hollywood playing it safe, making a flat, boring, accessible version, boiling it down to its most boring premise of what the original was or wasn't, you know? That's it. That's what this kind of is. You know, like uh, I read a review. Now, at last, again, I enjoyed the movie, but there's a funny headline for review. It was just had "meh" in black. That is that is <laughs> the most accurate accurate review. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's just a like, meh. Well, it's a meh wrong. movie. If they made a sequel, I would probably go to see it just out of yeah. curiosity. Just like I didn't Look, particularly want to see this film. This is but, this is my review. I wouldn't have seen this movie if Nathan didn't want to go. I make <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, make also, no apologies. Also, the show. <laughs> Yeah, but like well, we if, we, if we all agree, because you didn't want to go either, Callum. No, I didn't. At least originally. <laughs> and so if all this of us other agree. There's stuff we can talk about. Because there's a lot of movies we haven't seen, even though we have the show, just because we're just like not interested. Oh, yeah. Or, to, always... or both of you are not interested well, and I'll, like, I'll go on my own. And like, then... I, I told you uh, yesterday, they have the house that Jack built now on Amazon Prime. There's Black Mirror. There's all this other stuff we can talk about. Oh, yeah, about. we can always. There's, we, we can we push always, it out of We our always own. have content, yeah. So it's not a case of, you know, it's yeah. like there's nothing else. Yeah, my point is if they were. If they did it's, make a sequel, yeah. I would begrudgingly go and see it just out of curiosity to see if they can fix the problems. They yeah, won't. They won't. Spoiler. Yeah. But, yeah. you know. It, like, eh. like, like Kamal Nanjani is the best part of this movie. But that and, CG. And I also hated everything about like his see, character. If he, was a little, they, if he was a little prosthetic alien, amazing. Like, one of the best parts... Of the original Men in Black, and one of the parts I'm, I'm assuming most people remember vividly to this day is when the guy's face opens and he's got a little alien in his head. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a great idea, but it's also one of the best practical effects I've ever seen in my entire life, in the history of cinema. Rick Baker is one of the reasons why the original movie is so good, because of all his designs and prosthetics and um, animatronics and whatever. And a talking dog. And Frank, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but see, this is yeah. There's uh, no talking dogs in this film. No, Frank, no, Frank, Frank is, made a cameo. Yeah, Frank is in. He's in sitting next to the guy oh, yeah, who watches true. the yeah, door. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but what was I saying? Like animatronic. Yeah. In in Men in Black International, they have this little CGI alien who is supposed to be a chess piece. A pawn. Yeah. It's they're called not, pawnies or something. There's, so there seems they're, to be some type of race which happens to look exactly like the yeah, pieces of a but chess set. See, it, this movie's. I, I feel like there are a lot of deleted scenes in this movie on, on top of the poor script. There's a scene where the 
two of the bad guys who... Okay, for, all right. So let's get back to that chess piece. I'm going to write down chess. Okay, so I don't forget. Okay, I wrote cheese instead of chess. All right. Cheese so, piece. Cheese piece. All right, so all right, let's go back. One of the reasons Men in Black, the original, is so good is because of the villain. An action yep. movie is only as good as its villain. Our boy Vincent. Hans Gruber, T-1000. You know, like Agent Smith. The alien. Uh, alien, yeah. So, like, wh- A Men in Black, the original, has Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah. As, in, and he is, like, god level He is, movie. like, so good in that movie, yeah. it, like, blows my mind. Like, the Edgar the, suit it, alien... Sort of, like... It's Vincent D'Onofrio, it goes beyond acting. The way he, his yeah. mannerisms in, he's, like, yeah, he's as scary. In, yeah. he, he, in the, the way he inhabits that yeah. character, prosthetics add, like, yeah. ignore he, all prosthetics that might come so in He's so convincing yeah. that he's an alien in a yeah. man flesh suit. Yeah. It's scary, it's scary. basically. Yeah. yeah, and there's no, and, half the time, there's no and real he prosthetics. Also, he also manages to be extremely funny without trying to be funny at all because his performance is so genuinely... Alien. Alien. <laughs> yeah. That it becomes funny. He's not doing a funny performance, which I think is a lot of problems with a lot of actors and directors who try to make these kinds of movies where they're like, just be funny. You know, Chris Hemsworth is trying to be funny. Tessa Thompson is trying to be funny. You know, Tommy Lee Jones isn't trying to be funny. He's giving an authentic, grumpy, old agent performance. And so he comes off. The as comedy comes from the conflict. The con- between conflict the with Will Smith, who is trying to be funny, but he's also naturally charismatic and naturally quippy, and that's his kind of personality. But anyway, like he, they're not making jokes with the performances; they're giving good performances. That then the comedy comes out of that. And Vincent D'Onofrio's performance as the villain is so authentically alien and strange and scary that it also becomes funny. Men in Black 2, not a good movie, but Lara Flynn Boyle, I think, played the villain. Not, mm-hmm. a, not a great villain. One of the reasons the movie's not good. It has but, Johnny Knoxville in it? Yeah, one of the reasons it's not good. Oh. But, you know, Lara, she, she, <laughs> she's effective. She's like a, yeah. you know, um, a beautiful, deadly kind of femme fatale kind of thing. Men in Black 3, horrible, disgusting movie with, let, with a terrible, talk, terrible we villain. We don't Bar- have to talk about yeah. Men in Black 3. No, so <laughs> Boris is a terrible villain. And that's one of the mov- one of the many reasons the movie's terrible. This movie doesn't have a good central villain. Yeah, it's like what? Like, it's like it has a two weird villains? has a weird amorphous uh, idea of the hive, which is never really explained or developed, and is a generic cliche sci-fi. We, we, we trope. don't. I mean, for the most part, we know then, almost nothing about the villain in no, this movie. Yeah. Then, then there's the two twin uh, cosmic. Uh, Phase beings and they're, who they're kind uh, of like don't, red herrings. As yeah, well. who don't have any really. Again, we know nothing about them. Yeah, really. they don't really have any distinguishing. They're not interesting. They um, look cool though, in a way. Do they? When they turn into the cosmic yeah, thing, they look cool. 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 But when they, like what they their attack, you know, you know, they're not. Yeah, they're not interesting. They're not menacing. We don't know who they are, where they're coming from. Like then there's. Yeah, then then um, I guess there's High T who ends up being the villain, but he's not interesting. There's also Le- what's her uh, name, um, Rita. Oh, Riz, Riza, Riza, Riza? Yeah, yeah. Riza. Rebecca yeah, Ferguson. See again, Rebecca remember. Ferguson's playing a very. Everyone in this movie is a great actor, but all the all the characters, all the performances are just boring, dull, flat. Her uh, character's boring, dull, and flat. Liam Neeson was disappointing because he could have done more with this role. Yeah. He, even himself, he but, turns out to be the villain at the end. He could have had a couple of scenes where he seemed a bit more alien. Maybe, yeah. But, I mean, they're trying to keep it a secret the whole no, time. But which little yeah. things. Like, he could have done little things and just make you wonder, yeah. like, is he all right? Is yeah. he... Yeah, but... There's more, there's more they yeah. could have done with his role. But, yeah. Anyway, my point is, like... An action movie is only as good as its villain. One of the reasons the original is so good is because of Vincent D'Onofrio. One of the reasons the sequels aren't good is because of the other yeah. actors doing their villains. One of the reasons this movie is not so good is because there's no real central yeah. villain. No. There's it's, no real, like, you know, it's like good a vague, baddie. It's like a vague threat no, off yeah, the distance. Exactly. Um, and when the villain is revealed, it's just CGI, flip of floppy yeah, stuff exactly. and the end. You know, like, it's not interesting... So I think I was talking about Pawnee, play yes, bo- whose voice the, the a, chess li- race. a little ch- chess piece alien voiced by Kamal Nanjiani, who's really funny 
and probably the best part of the movie, but is also a character I didn't like and don't want to be in the movie. <laughs> so you can, see, you can see the problem, and there's some problems with unrealistic the movie. physics involved with yeah. this character later on. Um, but again, because of the world building so bad, like and like I was saying, that there's probably a lot of deleted scenes and and the script isn't so great. So the two twin villains go into the it's, it's like a it's like a bazaar in in Mor- Morocco. Yeah. Yep. Um, and they. Uh, kill the... It's like an MIB sort of safe area. So. Yeah, but it's not really explained yeah, who yeah. they are, why, why, like, who the... Yeah, what's going on. Like, see, in the original movie, when... Again, see, oh, God. When the original movie, when they go to Jeebs's pawn shop... Yeah. And they're like, show us the guns, and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about, show us the guns, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking him, about, yeah. and he shoots him in the head, and it's like, what? And then his head grows back, and it's like, oh, my God, this is amazing, and then he pushes the button, and the thing turns around, and there's <laughs> yeah. all the alien guns. It's like, this is so good. Why didn't they do that's that's not a that's not a very uh a unique scene like that's been done in certain ways in other films not just sci-fi films um so why in this movie they go into the bazaar they scare the guy he lets them into the back and then it cut and then you see the chess piece aliens which aren't well designed or well shot and you don't really know what's going on and cuts and then later when uh H&M go H&M Oh, no. <laughs> when, oh, my when, God. When H&M go to... Was that on purpose? <laughs> no. I just, I just stopped. Uh, they could have made a Harrods joke. Um, but anyway. Um, uh, so, and then they go into the, the... They find the guy dead, which we don't see on screen. They go into the back. Um, and all the little other chess pieces All the are other now. chess pieces Most of them are, are dead. dead. I, I don't even remember why the twin guys killed the chess pieces. They wanted to know I, whether... That was probably a deleted scene. Like yeah, they, I guess they wanted to know... The chess pieces knew where the alien weapon yeah, was. I don't know. Not explained yeah. very well at all. Um, but, but yeah. why would the chess piece know anyway? Like, also, yeah. Like, if this, if this exact scene was in the original, in addition to being amazing practical effects and better designs, there would have been much more of a tense, mysterious nature to it. There would the villain would have gone into the bazaar. It would have been smoky. The bazaar owner would have been like, "Oh, you know, I'll sell you this. I'll sell you this," and the villain would have fret, threatened him. But it's a sugar water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the sugar water thing, you know. Like he would have been like uh, chess. You know, he would have just said like, chess like or something. An you know, incomprehensible like, kind yeah. of thing. You know, and like, then and then the guy would have realized who the villain is, and then gone. You know, freaked out, pushed a button, then the back of the bazaar would open up slowly and it'd be revealed that there's this alien, uh, beautiful alien, miniature alien society living in the back of this Moroccan bazaar. Yeah. It would have been just incredibly well done. And this movie is like the boring camera, you know, walk in. Done on the cheap. Th- yeah, th- done quickly, cheaply, you know, ch- threaten the guy, he opens the door, they go run, they go in. Cut away. I'm bored already, James. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know, then H and M go back, uh, and they find everyone dead, um, and it's not really explained who these chess piece aliens are, why they're chess pieces, are they are they doomed to stay on the chess boards forever? Um, you know, why why are they in the back of this bazaar? How many of them are there? Why are they important? And then uh, Pawnee, who's a little pawn, he's the only one left alive of his race. Um, and he's like, I have to kill myself because I have to serve, you oh, know, so, to serve the queen. So uncomfortable. But that, then, could have, that could have been fixed if they had a scene with the queen sort of establishing that dynamic. Or, you know, or like if the queen it was could more, have been like, no, yeah, if that, I die, you all take yourselves or, with me. Yeah, like, or if it was more of a, had more gravitas, like, you know, like uh, other fantasy movies where it's like, I pledge my, le- you know, my queen's dead. I pledge my allegiance to you, my new queen, and yeah. I will help you but get that, revenge for the people who That kill. scene where he's like pretending to... Yeah. Pretend, I'm just like, oh, okay, I get it, See, move on. Kamel, yeah, Kamel's fantastic... But I don't want any of this in my movie. Yeah, no, Cut it not... all out. Cut it all out. Yeah. I want to see. I want to learn more about M and her journey to becoming a man in, man in black, a woman or a in person black. in black. Yeah. <laughs> uh, P, PIB doesn't have uh, <laughs> PIB. Um, but you, you know what I'm saying. Like even the good parts of this movie don't add up to shit. Then yeah. then don't, don't matter for anything. It's just. It's just, just a it's, shame. It's representative, like we've been talking about. This whole review is just basically analyzing how 
Men in Black International is representative of Hollywood's. It's like that franchise problem. Exactly. Corporate. The the remakes and the reboots. Yeah, it's like just a corporate business minded mentality. We We own the rights to this once popular movie or franchise. Let's churn out another movie. You've got to make some cash on our investment. It'll just be flat, generic, safe, makes money, might make a sequel, might not. Who cares? Make a mobile game out of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. There's no, like, no one one came and went, like, I want to make... I have a, like, no one was like, I have a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Like, no one was like, I want to make... The it's low, the Ghostbusters yeah. thing, isn't it? It's yeah, like, it's, exactly. It's like no one, apart from, of course, well, Howard Dan, Ramis. Dan, uh, Dan Aykroyd has been writing yeah. scripts for that yeah, thing yeah. since the second movie, but was, no one's uh, been listening to I, it. I retract that comment. <laughs> well, they're making a new one, allegedly, aren't they? Yeah. With the no, 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 cast? allegedly. I think yeah, they're filming it now. Yeah, so. so I'm glad they finally decided to make more after the originals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I I'm, don't know. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to turn out. We'll see. But yeah, yeah it's, well. it's the franchise problem. It's like, I, yeah. I really feel like in situations Especially like this... Especially because... Sorry, go they, if, if they wanted to make a new Men in Black movie, even for money, yeah. they should say, go to the best writers in Hollywood or whoever they know and say, write us a script and then we'll we'll see what happens. You yeah. know, like, instead of just... Because if, to me, personally, it feels like they just got, it like, an undergrad to, like, rush out a script and, like, okay, we'll just film this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's like just we the easy, before. lazy version yeah, of telling like, the next story. If I was the head producer... I would say, you know what? We're going to keep sourcing scripts until we find a good one. Dude, Which, again, that you might know, take a while. With the internet now, it's it's so easy to Look, like, we came source... up with a good story. <laughs> well, yeah, you've yeah, exactly. yeah, it. It's a competition. It's easier to source... Submit your own scripts. Yeah. So, like, uh, like, and Nathan, Jamie, look this up. Um, Yesterday's Enterprise was originally a fan script. Yesterday's Enterprise. Next Generation. Okay. I think. If not that episode, another g- good episode. So, like, s- you know, Star Trek would accept fan scripts and then would pick one and they'd rewrite it a lot and, you know, yeah, so on. Yeah, of course. But then they would make that episode and some yeah. of those episodes turned out being well, the really general, good. Well, the general premise for Mib, Mibby, I should say, yeah. just isn't very good. No, it's not. Like, chances are... Like, it's boring like Okay, flat. our general premise... Yeah. No details, but the whole kind of London spy thriller yeah. or whatever, that's a better premise. Yeah. We've already... If we just riffed on yeah. that one. We've already fixed it, mm. you know? You're correct. Yeah. Yesterday's Enterprise. At the beginning of Star Trek Next Generation's third season, Michael Piller became the head writer for the series. Among the changes he implemented was the opening of the story submission process to non-professional and unrepresented writers. Yeah. Despite Paramount's resistance to the change, The Next Generation became the first show produced in Hollywood to allow any writers to submit their scripts. The studio received more than 5,000 scripts in the first year. Yeah, you'll have to wade through a lot of crap to get to the good stuff, but there will be good stuff. And Yesterday's Enterprise is one of the best episodes of Next Generation, one of the most highly rated and one of the most beloved. Um, I can't see why they can't at least try that, if it, even and if it doesn't work out. That general methodology... I'm sure a movie's been written like that well, once uh, before. That general but, methodology you know, would also solve a lot of other problems Hollywood has with scripts as well. Well, that specific episode was a combination of two submitted scripts, apparently. Okay, yeah. But So they took the good ideas from yeah, two, exactly. they worked well together, yeah. and made a really good episode. You yeah. take the good characters from one script, and you take the good plot from the other, and you try and see what you can do with yeah. it. Well, like, I mean, you look at... Um, we've said this before in this episode already, but the first movie was so good because it was basically a buddy cop film. Yeah. With science fiction elements, uh, uh, why the, can't they do? Why can't they just do that again? There's, Start from the ground up and yeah. work up. One of the reasons the original is so great is because it's pretty simple. It's like we've been saying. It's about that streetwise New York cop who gets caught up into this mysterious um, underground underground organization. organization who deals with alien life forms, and there's butting heads with him, his personality, and Kay's personality. And his kind of thinking outside the box, not playing by the rules, and the MIB's very strict, very kind of sterile way of doing things. Um, and that's where the comedy comes from. That's where the drama comes from. That's where the action comes from. That's what's interesting. Th- then you get MIB 2, which for me, I think a lot of the problems we're seeing now stem back to MIB 2, where I think MIB 2... They they should never have brought Tommy Lee Jones back. Kay should have never come back. 
Because he, he even was though, retired. Yeah, at the start even though I love Tony yeah. Lee Jones, his K is great. Like he they he, they neuralize him at the end of Men in Black One, and he gets to live with his lo- like the love of his life, and it's like a happy ending for him. That's kind of weird. And then uh, we, I get, and then would they have yeah. neuralized her as well? To be like, no, he's she... now the love of your life? Or... No, 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 no. No, that's that's just creepy. That yeah. opens up a whole other yeah, like, can of worms so, there. Ha- I don't understand the process of how reintegrating him into this relationship worked. Well, she... Because she, he went missing uh, on the night, you know, on yeah. one night, and she never got married or had oh, another... Okay. Like, yeah, that she makes w- sense. She was always, quote-unquote, waiting for him, you know, whatever. In reality, then, she would have moved on, had a whole bunch of kids, yeah. got married, and then, and and then they neuralised yeah. her. No, no, she didn't know anything about Men in Black. She's, no, no, she's not... but the realistic Honey, version I'm of this home. movie is... Yeah, okay, Honey, well, we're, getting, we're, getting off, we're getting off track. So what was I saying, Callum? Do you remember? Yeah, we were talking about the character development from the first one, how the, ca- the, the pay... You were mentioning yeah. how the payoff so of Yeah, so they K's should arc. never... They, they pay off Kay's arc, and Will Smith's agent, Jay, becomes the new... The new K, he's learned. He's learned everything yeah. he needs to learn from the mentor character K. Now K can go and live his life because being a Men in Black is a lonely kind of yeah, exactly. solitary existence. It's a one way ticket, basically. Exactly. And so K goes off and he's happy. And then Men in Black Two should have been about Jay being the new hotshot agent, running things. He should have had a new part. At the end of Men in Black One. Linda Fiorentino uh, becomes his kind of sidekick, uh, Agent L. They should have explored that. They should that have explored that. He should have had, like, it, you know, I don't know whether they didn't want her back or whatever, but they should have been, like, him and another agent, and now he's the K, you know, and now he and there's another, you know, another problem. But instead, they do this really contrived thing where they're like, well, we have to bring K back because reasons, and we have to give him his memory back. And I don't think it's ever explained what happened to his wife. And it's really sad and sick if you think about kill her. it. That, yeah, it's really sad and sick if you think really think about it. That they ripped him back from and his I, retirement, and then they just never addressed it in because then he's in the third one. And one, it's like they never. And one thing I don't like is the fact that they sort of go through those hoops to deneuralize K. Yeah. It's like that should have been a permanent thing. Yeah, or even not permanent. Like there should have been no reason for them to bring him back. Like that's just. Like, they should have just made... Now, I think they made the mistake of going, well, you can't have Men in Black without Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones. Whereas I think they should have gone, we're going to have some balls and say, it's Will Smith and someone else. And the the someone else doesn't have to be another big actor. Yeah. It can just... Will Smith's star power can carry any movie. So, you know, it's not... But anyway, I think Men in Black 2... Is where the the CGI starts because the movie you know came out in like two thousand one, so CGI started to get a bit more usage, um, and that's when the movies start to get more silly, more slapsticky. You had Johnny Knoxville's character, you had more uh, you know Frank the dog becomes like a sidekick. You have more comedy, more flippy floppy CGI aliens. Then the third movie just goes full CGI bullshit. Um, bad jokes, flippy floppy CGI stuff, boring, uninteresting, you know, smashy, smashy, boring, dumb yeah. stuff. So now you're at Men in Black International and it's like, well, it kind of makes sense we've gotten to this point where it's just a flat, generic Hollywood reboot. Oh, look, you can see it coming. Because, yeah, of what, you know, but even if the sequels didn't exist, I doubt that uh, Hollywood would be any more creative with it. No, you know, But what I'm saying is, is like, if you actually go back to the original, strip it back to what made it good, it's that char- those characters, that world, that kind of gritty underworld crime. You know, the first movie definitely has a sort of seedy kind of smoky... It's kind very of, New York. Yeah, That's it's New, like New it's York, like, yeah. It's a New York exactly. sort of crime film. And you know, making another movie in that world, um, you don't necessarily have to bring it back to New York, but you have no, to... No, but, like, you can like, substitute yeah, London. Exactly. London's London. grimy, go into London's a, old. Go, yeah, go into a pub, there's a couple of old geezers smoking, you know, there's <laughs> That's a, one thing we there's didn't a have Cockney, enough of. We didn't have enough Cockney geezers. Cockney aliens. There was that one guy that went, oi! Yeah, yeah. oh, that was good. That, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> we didn't so, have enough yeah, geezers should, You know, Cockney. like, imagine, imagine, like, but, lock, stock, and two smoking barrels, but with aliens. They could, you know? Alien like, gangsters. Yeah, yeah, they could have had an in-joke where they're speaking, like, Cockney rhyming slang, yeah. and there's subtitles, like, yes. those alien speak. Yeah, and then and then uh, uh, M, who's a new agent, should be like, I don't understand what yeah, they're yeah. saying. And like, they must English. be aliens, and she pulls yeah. her gun, yeah. and H is like, no, no, they're not aliens, they're just 
Cockneys. Yeah, yeah. And then he starts speaking them to them in slang. Yeah. Send us a check. <laughs> See, and that's keeping it within the theme of like. Okay, yeah. It uh, has to be a very serious uh, scene, though. You know what I mean? Like no, no one's laughing. Yeah, it's like it's a not, drama scene. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's not again like the original. The perform the, yeah. the humor comes from the authenticity and the performances. It's not ha ha jokey jokey. Like we're like, making fun aliens. of Cockney. Yeah, you know, like, she pulls it. Like, it's really tense scene. She's like yeah. the aliens. It's like okay. no, this is Cockneys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we have to wrap up the live section, but just one more thing. Like the world of Men in Black is so interesting, and so you could you could explore so many different facets of that world like star wars like star trek like a lot of like lord of the rings there's so many places you can go and yet as hollywood does they pick the most boring safe route you know and like making a men in black movie without will smith without tommy lee jones making a men in black movie not set in new york that's fine but what you have to do is bring it back like what's interesting about men in black it's the secret society who investigates alien yeah uh, occurrences or, or you know whatever make it about that make x files it's yeah. why it's why people like yeah. x files it's two people in suits going from oh, town man. to town investigating the paranormal it's why it's why people love supernatural i you just want to yeah. it's just, two guys investigating supernatural occurrences in a sick car i just read <laughs> i listen just, in a rock music like. I, I just i just want, i just thought of how much i want to see agent d david Duchovny in like men in black oh, oh. Did they make? Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, I can't remember if they made made that joke in the second movie. I know Michael Jackson was in the yeah, second movie. Ah, oh, painful. Yeah. <laughs> Agent M. No, Ag- I can be Agent. The original M. Agent M. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tessa Thompson got stuck with that designation. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So this is the end of the live portion. Yeah. Uh, if you're listening live up next is Manny J with Car Talk. Continue listening for the podcast. Yeah, we'll be back in one sec. Um, yeah. So we we're, we we're, were talking about. Um, we want to talk about Liam Neeson's character, uh, High T, who, one, I think they sh- High T should have been a nickname because that would have made the joke make more sense and make would have made it more funny. Like, they should have... Because he's Agent T, like, they should have referred to him. But then his subordinates should have called him High T as a joke, like an English joke. Yeah. Um, but, that, like, his official title is High T, which is dumb. Um... On top of that, you've got Liam Neeson. Use him. Mm -hmm. Like, make him an old Irish, you know, brawler who got caught up in the Men in Black, you know, got recruited back in the day. You know, like, that would be much more interesting and much... It would lead to a a lot more jokes. Um, It would just be much funnier and, and like, yeah. Yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and yeah, also it would mean you could uh, use Liam Neeson instead of just having him be there and say lines. It's the same thing with Emma Thompson in this movie, though, man. We get yeah, but see, like, I mean, then that problem goes back to Men in Black Three, where they didn't get Rip Torn back as Zed. No, but I mean, because in of, using the yeah, actors. his drug problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but and then it's like, and then they replace him with Emma Thompson, who I love Emma Thompson, but I. Never liked her as O, you know, the new head of the MIB. But yeah, and now now she's just basically a cameo, which I guess makes sense for the movie because they go. They to needed a way to tie it to the like yeah the, the earlier ones. Uh, also, like uh, I think I like we were saying, like the movie should have been more set centered in London. Like I think if if they are going to set it in London, then they should have just made it about English characters and just not worried about the original MIB in New York. Um, or alternatively. Uh, focus more on Tessa Thompson's character's, you know, uh, journey to become a man, a person in black. <laughs> um, Pe- people in black. Yeah. Um, focus on that journey. Um, and if you're going to do that, then just make another New-, New York movie and don't worry about the international stuff. Um, you could even have the um, the London as like a stinger, you know what I mean? Like, you you have a good movie set in New York, yeah, and then if you want to branch out to other cities, mm. that's a stinger. We have a problem in London. Well, they could Credits. have, yeah, they could have just uh, mentioned it, you know, like you know, oh, we got a problem here. Oh, uh, MIB London says this, you know, and they just could have mentioned. But um, well, they could have they could have made um Men in Black L A. Yeah, you know, yeah, still keep it an American city, a Hollywood centered noir you know, drama. Yeah, <laughs> realistically, I think because we're realists here. Yeah. The America, uh, there would only be men in black in America. 
they would not talk to other kind. Like, well, it's like, do, you think, do you think these black programs, like in 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 UFO circles, yeah, there, or were they like unacknowledged, unacknowledged special access programs? Yeah. Do you really think the Men in Black are talking to other countries? The, Hell no. The Men in Black, as an idea, <laughs> like not the movie, like the idea of yeah. the Men in Black, the you know the things that like X Files is based on, oh, and like stuff, the like the Mothman is prophecies ver- kind exactly. of agents, is a very American, yeah. like you know, 1960s UFO sightings but, kind of thing. But they miss an opportunity. Because they could have spun was a, the origin of this. They could have had something There's a lot of like, UK UFO ology yeah. stuff yeah, as well. Yeah, black like, really, Stonehenge uh, should have yeah, been at the, the center the of portal. the portal. That could have been the portal. The portal, the hive portal. Yeah. Send us <laughs> send us a check. Like and, why it's like at the top of Paris, it's connected by some beam. Yeah. And, and Paris like, isn't even important in the movie. No, it's literally just so they can use the like, Eiffel Tower. Could like, you, Paris doesn't actually fi- figure into it. Another thing Wouldn't it be funny if they go to a French restaurant and eat frog's legs and snails, but they're like little aliens that come to life? I don't know. That's a dumb joke. But you, do you know <laughs> yeah, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, ma- yeah. if you're going to be in Paris... Do some French culture. Make some... Yeah. yeah make do make some, some alien... Yeah. Or make a joke that all French people are aliens because, the Eng- like we said, the English have that, you know... Yeah. Uh, as far as we're concerned. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, for real, like, they could have done something about the origin of the Men in Black, not necessarily keeping it in America, but, like, it was born out of World well, War II, sort of Kingsman-esque, like, that's, Hitler loved aliens, that's right? An- that's another thing is, it in, in the original Men in Black, they say that K was one of the original members because he was, like, a teenager going to see the woman he loved and got sort of sidetracked by the first alien contact landing with a few scientists and government agents. And so he got roped into that. Um, And so he's one of the first MIB agents. Now, that was, I think, in 1960 or 1961. So in the canon of the movies, the Men in Black organization... Dune does not predate that time. At least in its sort of current... Form, at least, at in, least yeah. in terms of its uh, contact with aliens, but they could have they could have doesn't had some, predate that. So they could have had some comments being like, "Oh, we were doing it before." But exactly. So they could have done like, yeah, the a the coalition Euro- of the, yeah, the European yeah. branch is you know ha- has a different uh, Origin, beginning. Yeah. You know, maybe they were a separate organization altogether until they decided to. Because yeah. so they still have some autonomy. See, and the world building is interesting. Discussing it now is so much more interesting that. And anything in the actual yeah, sequels um, or you like, know the international, I still feel it deep in my bones. They could have done something with World War Two because Hitler was a UFO nut. Oh uh, well, no. So he wasn't a UFO nut. It's like he a, was a, he was a cult. cult. Yeah, he was an occultist. But, uh, same deal. But come on, the, no, the like, German the German scientists did try and invent a flying saucer. He, here's another thing. Like there's that bit where they like um, M goes down to get the train to to London, yep. and there's like a like a pair of shoes with like teeth. Yeah, that's very Harry Potter. Yeah, and I'm like, this isn't Men in Black. That's that's Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, and this is one of the things I hate about Men in Black International is that it's a Fantastic Beasts like bullshit CGI yeah. little little cutesy wootsy uh, fantastical creatures flipper flopping around. There's no good practical aliens, you know, with big black bug eyes, you know, like you know, and their brains showing, you know, like. And that's like, that's what's so great about yeah. the original Men in Black, and I think it's why it again it ties into that Americanness. You know, Rick Baker, Rick Baker's designs for the aliens it comes from real alien mythology. You know, the the Greys with yeah. the big eyes. You know, the 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 sort of that sort of world. Um, whereas this movie is just like, no, this is yeah. funny, colorful and creatures also, that could be from any science fiction or fantasy now, movie ever. Uh, if, uh, it's boring and generic. Listeners probably wouldn't be surprised to find out that the people in the studio do not mind a good, con- real, bona fide conspiracy theory. So, <laughs> so I, I would uh, really especially, lo- especially, especially me. You. Uh, no. I, I would have really loved it if the bad guys in the movie were reptilians. Just like the straight that's, up. Okay, so that's another thing. Yeah, no, go on. Like you know, so the, in the conspiracy, in the UFO conspiracy world, there's like the bad aliens in quotation marks, <laughs> and they just look like reptiles. Yeah, like it's ridiculous. They're basically <laughs> just reptiles that walk around doing bad stuff. But like, why couldn't that be the bad guy? Why couldn't it be a reptilian, yeah. like so, some dude with scales on his face? In Men in Black One, K says something to J along the lines of, you know, there was that because they're about to be destroyed by that spaceship in space, and he's like. 
yeah, you know, this isn't this isn't my first rodeo. There was that time, you know, there's the Karelian invasion or whatever, and he was like, there was that uh, deadly plague, alien plague that was released. You know, just they're like throwaway lines, but they add to the world building. Yeah, like war stories. Yeah. Now then, the sequels happen, and they're all pretty much kind of boring. I guess the third one tries to be different with time travel, but you know that's it's not a good movie, and time travel doesn't add anything to the many. It's just it's a bad movie. Now you've got international, and now it's just a kind of generic retelling of you know, kind of like the first movie. There's an alien weapon. There's an alien invader. You know, there's a bug kind of creature that comes out at the end, and like it's not interesting or new or new unique. Why not, like, do what you said, make it about reptilians who have taken over the royal family or, you know, whatever, or, you know, make it about, like, you know, Kay mentioned that alien plague, make it a disease movie, make it about, like, an Andromeda strain kind of contagion, but with an alien element where they have to find patient zero, you know, they have to, they have to navigate the underground alien world for cures or for, you know, find out, you know, and it's just make it make it you know you've got you've got a whole world to explore not just in men in black but in the world of real yeah you'd like, a- alien conspiracies and real yeah. conspiracy theories crop circles and so on you know like and you can twist a- all aspects of cold shine yeah, and the mothman like, make a mothman sort of you know movie like anything you can twist all of the, you know, like, events and cultures to your yeah. benefit. Yeah, and make something different. An alien twist on, yeah. Yeah. you know, ma- something different. Yeah, make it different. Don't just have, there's an evil alien invader who looks like a human and then comes out as a bug at the end. Then there's an alien weapon that they have to get. Like, you know, Tom Cruise it. is about to bring Xenu back and Tom Cruise is an alien. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tom, um, only if Tom Cruise plays himself. himself. Which he might. Um, he might. I, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe not in that specific movie. He, 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 I don't, th- see, I don't think gonna... he likes taking that much of the piss. Like, <laughs> he, he, he might I take would... a little bit of the piss of himself, but not that much. I always hoped that he would come on the show. So Tom I think Cruise. you just dash that. Uh, <laughs> please go on the show. I know I don't like most we of the movies. We but... didn't mean it. <laughs> Zenu's a really bad dude. We don't want him to do that. <laughs> no, I'm serious though. Like, you know, <laughs> you ruined you have one dream. That's to get Tom Cruise on your podcast. Um, But like... So, like, we've already est- well established that the third movie is complete trash. No, no, we don't talk about the third but movie. But Josh Brolin is fantastic as young K. Now, as, as terrible as an idea as this would be, and as much as I wouldn't want them to do this, making a young K movie set in the 60s, 70s, or even 80s Ooh. would have at least been kind of a fun thing to do. You know, let's see MIB back in the 70s when people had, you know... Yeah, they're wearing the black suits, but they were kind of flared, you know, and, and they had yeah. big, big mutton chops. Open collar. Yeah. And, like, ha- the technology is, you know, sort of retro. I mean, it's retro futur- futuristic in the first movie t- to an extent, but have even more, you know, CRT yeah. screens and, you know, like, make it a bit more. And it could have been a joke where uh, you, we see, like, a CR, like a modern old computer and be like, see, we're ahead of the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, this like, has 500 or he has a, he has a disc, yeah. yeah, it's like he has a disk drive before everyone else and it's, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. amazing, you know? Like, like that, <laughs> that at least would have, would, would, have been, would have been fun, you know? Yeah. Whereas, you know, what we get is just so flat and generic. What's um, this? They call it a USB. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. The latest in military technology. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but... Cordless phone. Yeah, well, they could have... Sh- they could, like, you know, in the first movie, uh, K has that little silver, like, uh, yeah, little, yeah. you know, the like mobile phone, phone yeah. you know, with the the antenna. And they could have had that, but it's like a really big version, you know? Um, <laughs> like, at least that's kind of, you know, interesting. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, one thing, one more thing we'll mention was a few years ago... There was that, I guess, I don't know if it was actually planned or if it was just rumors, but that Men in Black Jump Street uh, 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 crossover. Yeah, which sounds terrible, but also would have been more, infinitely more interesting than what they're doing with the franchise. So, personally, I would have liked to see that because at least that would have been interesting. And at least that would excuse some of the dumb jokes and the CGI flippy floppy aliens. Because it would have tied into 
Jump Street's overall silliness and over the topness. Yeah, pretty much on brand. So I like that would have just made more sense to me if they just did that crossover. It's it's interesting, it's unique, like it's different. Whereas now what we're getting is just a boring, generic, soft reboot of a once a one good movie and a couple of bad sequels. And you know, like like all Hollywood movies, not living up to the world that was set up. You know, not exploring what's actually interesting. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to mention anything else about no, Men in Black? No, I think we covered all the disappointments and yeah. my somewhat optimistic opinion. <laughs> yeah, but it's just it's just a shame. Like, you know, we, there's all this money and resources that go into making even the worst movies and it's like they could redirect them to make something truly incredible, but they don't because it's, effort, it's, all, yeah, it's all about money and and playing it safe that's it um should we should we talk about uh e3 what else what else what other games are coming nintendo coming out? nintendo nintendo won e3 yeah did they they did because nintendo just does nintendo they're no, just like nintendo- here are the same games we do no, every year no, nintendo won e3 okay. animal crossing <laughs> uh which i'm a big fan of personally I'm animal a- crossing the witcher on the Witcher Switch. 3 on Switch, on yeah. Switch. But that's not a new game. No, Although no. it is incredible that they can fit it on there. Keep in mind, people forget that the Switch is just a tablet running Android. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The fact, the fact that it can have The Witcher on there yeah. is amazing. Will yeah. we see a really crappy Cyberpunk? Maybe. No. How, yeah, I don't know how they're going to... No. I mean, if they can fit The Witcher on there... <laughs> no, but see, this, so the, the Witcher was the best of its generation. But the Cyberpunk's going to be the best of like, well, next the, year's generation. Of the new Doom, the new Wolfenstein, they're being developed now. And they look shitty, though. They all look shitty on the Switch. Yeah, they will, but it doesn't mean it, they're still they there. They look shitty, but will they be on there? They will. The point. They will be on. They've been confirmed. Both yeah. Doom Eternal and Wolfenstein Youngblood are both confirmed for the Switch. Cur- yeah. Current gen games are being released Color, on the Switch. Look, look color me uh, cynical. I don't think we're going to see Cyberpunk on the Switch. I don't I think know, that's man. A- how much was it? We've seen some. We've seen some shit on the Switch. Yeah, that's going to be a stretch. We'll see. Um, Luigi's Mansion. Forward, 3. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Luigi's Man- Luigi's Mansion Three. That looks good. Yeah, because I, I like the first one's great, and the second one came out in DS. 3DS. 3DS. Which I don't have. I'm like, I'm not going to get a 3DS just to play that. And I'm like, oh, I really want them I to... I have a spare one. I'll lend it to you. Okay. But the... And I think they re-released the first one on the 3DS as well. And mm-hmm. I'm like, why don't they just re-release the first one on the Switch? The Switch is the perfect console for Luigi's Mansion. So I was kind of salty that they didn't re-release the original. Or make it works. It... They work really well on the 3DS. Yeah. And I was like, are they going to make a new one? Are they going to make a new one? And then now they've announced a third one on the Switch, which I'm really excited for because it looks pretty good. Gooigi. Gooigi <laughs> looks Gooigi's amazing uh, and also they announced um, a sequel to Zelda Breath of the Wild yeah which um, now I have to play it yeah oh. it's kind of like I had never finished the first one as we, I think we were talking about last week I'm like well do I have to finish the first one or can I just get this one and not finish that one as well <laughs> but it's still I think it's still early days it's just called Breath of the Wild sequel at the moment yeah and also it seems to be just the same design the same running the same engine like it's not a complete you know, like it's not a leap, like Breath of the Wild. Like it's we'll probably just a, see it next year, I reckon. Yeah, which I mean, it's not a bad thing. No. They seem to be they, from what I understand, they seem to be focusing more on the dungeon stuff, which people like missed from older games. So that'll be interesting. I, also, I maybe think... maybe it'll fo- help focus some of the open world yeah. uh, dauntingness. And the um, we're going to be able to see soon the footage of the Cyberpunk demo. That was behind oh, yeah. closed doors, this E3. Well, they did that last E3, remember, yeah. when they showed the behind closed doors and then Which, they sh- released it on the net. Some of us are going to PAX this year and may or may not be able to see a Lucky. demonstration of the demo. Lucky. Yeah, you say that, but... Are you You're not allowed to play it, though. Are you going to want to line up for six hours? I'll do it late on the Sunday when there's nobody waiting, I might. Okay, so you wait three hours on the Sunday. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll do what I have to do. <laughs> I'll pass. You just wait till they release it on the net, like... A few weeks later. That's true. <laughs> By the time it's in at PAX, it's probably on YouTube. Yeah, anyway. probably, yeah. Um, there are already, like, detailed descriptions of what's in it um, online. Who People yeah, have seen I just it. Want, I just want Keanu, man. I want him in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of Keanu... I hear like, that he's lonely. We I talking, want him in my life. We were talking about Johnny, you know, him playing Johnny Silverhand and... Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Before I forget... Yeah. Uh, one thing that I found out uh, is that we were talking about the cyberpunk source materials. Yeah. 
Uh, so uh, I'm I'm fairly certain that Cyberpunk has acquired the lice, the rights to the the original source materials. Okay. Because apparently CD next Project year, mean, I was interested or? in purchasing the source materials for a future podcast. Maybe. Yeah. But I read on the net that next year or uh, spring, like uh, not so uh, autumn for Americans. Yeah. 2020. Yeah. So they re- there there's a new version of the source materials coming out called Cyberpunk Red. Yeah, but that's like a sequel, uh, as far as I understand it, it's like a sequel um, uh, source book. Yeah, as long as it's like up to more modern yeah, but interpretation I've, I'm, of the rules. I'm not sure if it's going to have, like it's not a 2020 core book and then this is like, I don't think it's going to have the 2020, like this is set after 2020, like it's a sep- it's almost like a separate game. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, like, but like, because the- I've done some digging as well. And it seems like, as we were talking about last week, the 2020 core book doesn't seem to have been reprinted any time, legally reprinted yeah. any time recently. Well, the... Um, and, yeah, there's only a couple on eBay for yeah, 200 so, bucks. Like, the, wiki, so, the wiki of Cyberpunk Red, it just states it's an upcoming pen and paper RPG. It's meant to be the latest edition of the Cyberpunk yeah. pen and paper RPG, yeah. and it's going it's to like coincide the, with the release of the video. Yeah, game. it's like the D and D five, like you know what I mean? Yeah, like, but like a more modern. Yeah, it's it's canonically the, yeah, the like Night City personally is in a different era than it was yeah, in Cyberpunk twenty twenty, exactly. which doesn't mean it, obviously we haven't seen Cyberpunk Red, so yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. No, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I personally would like a Cyberpunk twenty twenty core book from the early 90s reprinted with the original artwork and the original rules yeah. and the original whatevers and then red comes out separately and can buy that as well that's great or have a, or a box both. set yeah that'd know. be sick but as far as i know they haven't really reprinted any of the cyberpunk uh, well, older so, materials or source books or guidebooks the, the or, core rules for cyberpunk 2020 were kind of a mess there was a lot of systems that were just vague descriptions, and it was up to each individual DM yeah. to kind of figure out how to implement them correctly. Yeah. So, like, again, Cyberpunk but, 2020 was ahead of its time, yeah. but from what I understand, the core rule set wasn't exactly a masterpiece. Yeah. But th- oh, that's so not I'm, my that's, point. I think my... Red is trying to yeah. kind of make that more yeah. comprehensive. Well, yeah, it, that's not, but that's not my point. Is like My point is to physically, like we were talking about last week, to physically get a copy, legit mm. copy, yeah. of the original core book or, or some of the source books some of them aren't just aren't available you can purchase uh, most of them are just second hand but extremely you can expensive pirate them no, to no, no. You or can, you can get the, or you so, can get yeah. the pdf you, you which can, isn't that hard but it's not the same thing you can no. purchase the you can the, purchase the, the, printed you can you can purchase the core materials and all the supplementary materials yeah. off the uh, official website but it's not the original run yeah and it doesn't include all of the artwork from the original run so yeah so like, you can acquire them relatively cheaply i think it'll cost like 40 bucks yeah and then whatever postage and then the same for like the night city materials and all that yeah but it's not the original with all yeah. of the accouchement yeah but that like that's what i think we were talking about last week is it would be nice to have a reprinted version of the original yeah. stuff i mean it might happen i mean we'll hopefully have to wait, i mean we'll have to wait to, and see for, for cyberpunk 2020 to be re-released in 2020 would be <laughs> amazing <laughs> yeah you know you know what Maybe chances that sounds moderate. too good. Chances are moderate. If, if, chances if, are moderate. Yeah, if if CD Projekt Res does have anything to do with the publishing oh. rights, hopefully like, that's, that's what happens. That's my assumption. Is because yeah. the new version is going to well, be called Cyberpunk yeah. Red. But I'm the like, Cyberpunk. Yeah, I think that's just because uh, Mike Pondsmith, who created Cyberpunk, is making Red, and from what I understand, Red isn't a uh, isn't a reference to CD Projekt. Oh, Red. really? I just assumed it it's was. just it's like set in a time that's called red because it doesn't have a year. He said the year is not. It's not because there was like Cyberpunk 2013, then there was Cyberpunk 2020, and then there was like Cyberpunk 30 something. Um, and now he's like, now it's Cyberpunk Red. So it's after, it's between, I think it's between Cyberpunk 2030 and Cyberpunk 2077. But he's like, it's not a year, it's like a period of time called Red because a lot of corporate war stuff was going on. And, you know, there's sounds all that good lore, to me. which sounds awesome. And I, you know, I'm yeah. sure we'll get into it. Um, but yeah, like, as far as I know, it's not a. CD Projekt Red oh, creation. I was not, well, not not a creation, but I was hoping but, that oh, yeah. they would have their they yeah. would lend him their strength. You know what I mean? But, like their yeah. like financials. Well, uh, like, like we said last week, they at least have the rights to 
reprint sell, the PDF. Sell us, sell us the PDF in the the game the, the, the with the game. Yeah. So, you know, they have that at least. So, hopefully that leads to maybe... But there's probably a publisher out there who owns the rights and is just holding onto them. And Well, he... Again, the um, the gentleman who owns the... Uh, the uh, What's his name? Ah, uh, Tell... I can't remember. It's... Oh, yeah. Tell's run. Yeah, yeah the, he, run. Uh, he... The actual guy who made... Telsorian. Telsorian, yeah. The, yeah. He, he, he created uh, Cyberpunk... I'm pretty sure he. I'm pretty sure he did it as an indie because he still he, sells. He owns the publishing rights. Yeah, and he's so the one that's... who he's the one who's partnering partnering with CD Projekt. So they might is have, he? Yeah, because he's he's they they had him on board day one. No, that, help... I think you're thinking of Mike Pondsmith who created Cyberpunk 2020. Because they like got the that author Artel of... Sorian was at um, he was at E3 with CD Projekt well, Red. If they've got both Mike Pondsmith and Tel Sorian, then I can't see why then. I know that Talsorian like, is like on board. If he, but if he owns the publishing rights and he's still indie, like I guess that makes sense why they never re- reprinted yeah. the original. I, I'm, I'm only assuming he's indie because the only place you can officially buy yeah, the on books the website. are on his website, and yeah. his website is and, super nineties awful. Yeah, and also they're not like proper. As far as I understand, they're just prints of the PDF. Yeah, like, probably. They're not like hard. They're not like actual bound yeah. soft cover books. That's also probably correct. From what but, I understand. Uh, yeah, so I'm assuming that's why he's indie. Um, so I'm assuming yeah. he would be amenable to a kind of a coupling of some sort, as long as he can. I hope so. As long as he keeps creative control, yeah. which I'm assuming City Project will let him keep creative control of the prints mm. of like the the source materials because they they just want to make video games. Yeah. Keeping well, on keeping on 20... a favorite game from E3. See, um, uh, some... before we get that, we were talking about Johnny Silverhand. That's just... what I was I was okay. about to bring it back okay, down good, to, good, to good. our man Johnny. See, someone asked in an interview. They asked Keanu Reeves, are you singing in the game as Johnny Silverhand? And Keanu, apparently in the interview, I haven't watched the interview, he was really disappointed and he said, no, they wouldn't let me. But, <laughs> but, then, but then he went on to say, but there's still a few months left. Uh, he want, <laughs> he's like, we'll see. Because Keanu Reeves actually wanted to like, yeah. perform as Johnny I Silverhand. Think, I think Keanu can play the guitar. Like legit. Yeah, like oh, uh, speaking of, I'm sorry that triggered my memory. Just counting with the guitar. More information has been leaked about uh, Bill and Ted, the new Bill and Ted movie. Uh, yeah, what did they say? Uh, so now it's the end. It's got two. So it's a generational movie. So you have Bill and Ted. Yeah, and, and their children kids. involved. Yeah, and I just love the naming of the children. What? Are they? Bill's daughter is called Theodora, and Ted's daughter is called Billy. <laughs> it's the most Bill and Ted thing I've ever heard in my life. Because, like, the two bros I, like, who love each other so much, they're going to name their kids after... After each other. I, just, I love it so much. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm sorry. Just a good thought. Good, good, Keanu uh, but, yeah, Keanu, yeah. Wild Keanu wants to sing in Cyberpunk. Yeah. That would be amazing. But um, what I was going to say before we got sidetracked with all the um, Cyberpunk 2020 tabletop stuff was that, um, you know, we were talking about how Keanu is playing Johnny Silverhand, who's this big kind of law character in the 2020 world. But in 2020... He was like thirty or whatever. So this takes now takes place in twenty seventy seven. So he's he would be like ninety years old. Well, but we li- they live in a cyberpunk world with augmentations and technology and so on. But on top of that, when you see him in the end of the trailer, he flickers. So that's been explained a little bit. Yeah. So they've talked about how in the behind the behind the closed doors uh, gameplay that. Um, Johnny Silverhand is like your AI companion. He's like Cortana in Halo. Yeah, sort of. who like hang in like hangs out in the back of scenes. That's and so like talks cool. To you. Like you're the only guy that can so, see yeah. him. So he's like your mentor. Like he's he's not physically there, but he's also not a hallucination because he's like an AI in your. Yeah. Uh, but eye, he's Johnny Silverhand. Yeah, your yeah. ocular implants. So. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I'm assuming he's going to help you like hack into stuff or whatever. Like, <laughs> and apparently like, he's kind of a dick. Like, he's just like, come on, what are we doing here? Like, come on. Like, and, you know, so that, I think that would be cool. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, apparently he has like most voice lines out of any cast other than the protagonist of the game. Something like that. Hmm. That's well, what I read. He I, has, so he has, he probably has a running, a sort of well, running commentary on pretty yeah, much all if, the events. Yeah. If he is, yeah. If That's he, what I read on the internet that Keanu has like... The most voice lines out of anyone in the cast but the main protagonist. Hmm, that's interesting. Because he's like along with the main character. Yeah, for a I guess. Lot of yeah, I guess after you encounter him at a yeah. certain point, he's with you the yeah. rest of the game. Maybe and he I just don't know. comments. Oh, yeah, whatever you're doing. Yeah, which I'm down. Yeah, 
Like Keanu Reeves, man, just join me just, on my adventures. Yeah. No, yeah, like doesn't just matter. All what, games, just all games. Yeah, that's what just I was gonna say. Like Keanu doesn't matter what game. Yeah, it doesn't matter what game. Just, just having, Keanu, like yeah. he doesn't have to be in the game. Just, just a commentary. Keanu Reeves, yeah. Like you know, in, in DVDs you have audio commentary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like oh, the yeah. Keanu yeah. track. He'd be like, yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And in yeah. movies too. Like you should have an audio track just Keanu Reeves talking about movies as you're watching them. <laughs> yeah. He's not even, it's not even a commentary on the movie. It's just yeah, like, he's hey, him just talking yeah. about the movie. He's not involved. It's just like every time they release a movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, for like, for like the new, even like Netflix, like the new Dark Crystal. I want to hear what Keanu has yeah. to say about it. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like sometimes <laughs> that's, that's what he'll say. Like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, watch out. Oh, wow, puppets. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'd be down for that. <laughs> DLC, CD Projekt Red should make that a deal. You know, Keanu, this is your side hustle. Yeah. Send us a check. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, what other games come out? Ooh. We talked about well, we talked we talked about Cyberpunk a lot. We talked about Death Stranding, Doom Eternal. I'm hyped for Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. We mentioned Blood Lies 2 briefly yes, last week. Still hype. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion, we mentioned briefly your hype mm, for that. That looks that. very good. Uh, Watch, uh, a game we didn't see that's in development this mm. year, though, Age of Empires 4. Has that been announced, though? Yes, it's, been, it's in development. We didn't see any this year, but yeah. they announced that it is being worked on. Okay. And I'm extremely hyped. Yeah, well... Because the last game was Age of Mythology. Ages I don't ago. even remember what year that, that was. That was ages ago. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly look it up to see if there yeah. was Didn't more Age of Mythology come out uh, before Age of Empires 3? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Age of Empires I forgot about Age yeah, of Empires Age of, 3. But even Age of Empires 3 was quite a while ago. Over, mm. over 10 years. Yeah. So We're old. There was also Destroy All Humans, which I think I mentioned briefly last week, yeah. which that, that, oh. that looks cool. You know what I? You know what kind of pisses me off? Mm. People are criticizing the new Star Wars game and saying it looks like it belongs in the PS2 era. I'm like, mm. you can't level that accusation against it and also like, not say it for Uncharted because it seems to be the same type of gameplay. Yeah. That's no. like a genre. Uh, uh, were we talking about the Star Wars one? Yeah. yeah it seems like, a, like, like the idea of that kind of... Indiana Jones esque adventure game. Yeah, but apparently it's not going to be like that at all. There was a new. Um, the gameplay was very reminiscent yeah, of Uncharted, it, though. Yeah, it was. But uh, this was broken on Twitter by a Kotaku journal- a Kotaku journalist. Mm. Um, he's done a whole lot of stuff before with Rockstar. He broke the sort of the Rockstar drama that came out a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he commented on someone speculating, and that this is apparently true. I mean, mm. He's he's a no, no he's a, like a trustworthy source. Yeah. Um, apparently, the new Star Wars game is going to play a lot like a Metroidvania type game, where you visit planets, mm. like you sort of go, to, you can choose which level you want to go to, and then at the end of the level, you'll unlock a new ability or an item. That allows you to go back to planets you've previously been on okay. and access different and areas. How is that Metroidvania, yeah. though? Well, no, That's but a- it's like different areas and different skills yeah. allowing you to go back you can't, and find yeah. secrets. Like you're yeah. blocked off from certain points until you upgrade yeah. something or... Yeah, yeah. I mean... I mean no, but still, but my, my point is that doesn't that doesn't stop no, it, it from being an Uncharted-esque Well, no, un- Uncharted sort of known more for its very linear... Yeah, very... yeah that's what I'm saying. Like, it doesn't, I'm not saying the story will unfold in yeah. a certain yeah. way. But I think he's talking about the parkour kind of jumping yeah. up things I'm like, and is that necess- and... People are criticizing it. Like, I'm like, that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as it's done well. Look, my criticisms, you all know my criticisms of any Star Wars property at this point. James um, is on board when we saw... Um, what's his face? Um, he's in, he's in Rogue One. Um, oh, Saw Guerrero. Yeah, Saw Guerrero. Oh man, when I saw him, I was like, <laughs> I don't like any of this. I was, I was watching it with Damien, who, who was on the show yeah. last week. He can tell you, I was like, I don't. As soon as I saw Saw Guerrero, I'm like, I don't like any of this. <laughs> like the fact that they're, I mean, there's so many problems with Star Wars and you know the prequel era and like having a Jedi running around, around you know, slicing. You know, I know it's a video game and whatever, but. It's like, it doesn't make any fucking sense. You know, like, it's the prequel problem of if there were Jedis running around with lightsabers and now are this intergalactic police force who had their own uh, building on the mm. ca- galactic uh, capital next to the Senate and dealt with the Senate. It's like, why doesn't anyone remember them in the original movies? <laughs> like, it's just this continuing... The, all, almost all the problems we're seeing now in Star Wars come from the prequels. And now you've got, like, Clone Wars and Rogue One characters who, you know, n- n- is appearing in this video game. It just all ties into the, the Disneyfication. Um, moving back to Age of Empires for a second. Yeah. Over E3, it was quietly announced, it wasn't showed off or anything, mm. that um, Microsoft has opened a whole studio dedicated to the Age of Empires series. Wow. Including supporting 
um, Age of Empires, like exporting all the games into the future. So that that includes remastering okay. Age of Empires One, which they're doing now. Yeah, they're doing that. Um, c- continuing support for two. Yeah, which is obviously probably their best performing game, mm. and developing four. Um, that would be good. I mean, because I, it's it's kind of a weird thing li- line to to walk. It's like ha- like if you you want you want the game to be newer, to be different, to to go forward in different directions. But Age of Empires Two is the best because it. It's simple. It does the things that it's people good wanted at to do. It's everything it does. So it's like, uh, how is yeah. 4 going to we'll see. live uh, up? But I'm excited. X, uh, I Xbox also that- boss, Phil Spencer, says they've been extremely impressed. It's a Relic Studios um, offshoot, I guess. He says, we've been incredibly impressed by Relic's capability. Edge of Empires 4 is making good progress, and they will talk about it later in the year. Okay, we'll see I know how that, that goes. Uh, Xbox has big ambitions because they also wanted to release the Master Chief Collection on PS4. Hmm. Yeah. That's, so now I'm, I'm assuming, like, I'm yeah, assuming that's, Sony that's, said no. Yeah. But honestly, that would have been a good little earner. It would. Oh, I yeah. mean, Microsoft has a lot to prove because there's that meme that never dies that Xbox has, or the Xbox has no games. Yeah, mm. and look, I mean, which is kind of true. This, I've had this yeah. argument many times with mostly Nathan. Is that you say that, but also it's important to remember that Xbox and Microsoft have diff- slightly different goals than Sony. The all, the approach for years, pretty much since the original Xbox, has been video games, yes, but also media. Uh, you, yeah, you but can I do think... more stuff with an Xbox in terms of a media center than you can with a PS4. But I think when that's not to say the PS4 is at fault for this. No, it's but just different. When, on... when the Xbox One came out and it was that online only, you have to have the Connect, yeah. and it was this. It's called the Xbox One because it's the one, con- you know, the one thing that will replace all your. Uh, devices and they got laughed out the door. Yeah, yeah, and it was a disaster. I'm not talking about their marketing. And I'm talking about just- no, no, and the actual implementation of yeah. it. It was terrible. People buy consoles to play games. That's the simple fact. Yeah, no, no, so- no. no, no. Uh, you, you, you don't let me finish because uh, okay, I'm, I'm not done. So yes, it's true that Sony has more first-party titles. They have more video games. I personally prefer PS4 to Xbox One, but. Straight from the get go, Xbox had full backwards compatibility. For not three, straight not from full. the get go, not no. full, uh, not full. And they're, not they're full, also limited. giving up on it now. They haven't. But my point was, they did embrace that long before it was cool. Yeah, right. They had yeah, you can play Xbox 360, certain Xbox 360 games, certain Xbox One games. But so they they had a big library in in that sense, and they do have some first party titles, not as many as Sony or well, or Nintendo. True. Yeah. But again, the the whole meme about Xbox not having games. It's just not true. Look, I mean, it all. It also depends on what games you're interested in. Um, I, I mean, I've got both consoles, and I'll probably continue to buy both because there's always going to be exclusives that you you you're missing out on. On you know, but yeah, uh, I think. Although they they want to continue going forward, they want don't they want most of their games on PC as well? Yeah, Microsoft. well, they're doing this. Yeah, yeah that yeah, game so then pass get, share. At some kind point of. in the future, if you have a PC, you don't need to buy an Xbox. Well, I mean, yes and no. Like, as someone like me who likes console gaming and doesn't really play PC games, and yeah, you can play PC games with a controller now, but just in terms of the performance... Yeah, I get you. And, it's a different you know, feel. And sitting, you know, lying back on the couch... You and, don't have you to know, worry about watch, if your you know, parts the big, can handle Exactly. Game. Like, you don't have to worry yeah. about upgrading, You don't, and your monitor doesn't... You know, you can watch it on the TV, play it on the TV, so... You know, I think there's always going to be a room for the console side. Oh, definitely. But, yeah, having that dual play capability is, I think, a really cool thing. Well, and they want the Xbox Games Pass on Switch, don't they, as well? <laughs> yeah, they did. That would be interesting. That would be cool. Um, well, like, I want to... Uh, there's a lot of other games. We'll just kind of uh, rapid fire through them. Um, Rainbow Six Quarantine, which uh, looks ter- off, terrible. Off Root of Siege. <laughs> yeah. But so, it's sort of left for dead, which is interesting uh, depending how so, they price it. Like, I don't care. Rainbow Six, like, I know Siege is popular and people really like it, but Rainbow Six died with Siege. I hate Siege. Like, now, our, friend, our mutual friend Andrew yeah. loves it. He yeah. can't get enough of it. I don't know if he still plays it, but he was obsessed with it. You just do the same thing every time. Yeah. Without it's, fail, it's the same shit. You know, Rainbow Six was, you know, tactical first-person shooter, fran- uh, tactical... Uh, yeah, military yeah, like, simulation. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Like a uh, squad-based kind of, you know, tactical choice, you know, shooter. Yeah. And then they made Siege and it was... Yeah, they turned into a Counter-Strike kind of, yeah, exactly. you know... It's like- uh, 
you know, grindy, you know, uh, uh, unlucky stuff. Money. Good and for them, people but like moved it. moved away yeah. from... And I was hoping that, you know, eventually they would get back to that, to the single player kind of tactical experience. Um, and I But the quarantine really... now is like an offshoot of Siege going into a zombie mode. And I'm just like, they've, they've lost it. They like, kind it's of took dead. That, they kind of took that and moved it into the... Um... Ghost Recon. Yeah, but even Ghost field. Recon now is very did like... You ever, did you ever play a Wildlands? No. Not bad. See, I was interested in it, but again, the open world problems that we talked about. They so, handle that okay. It's, like, so it is an open world, Yeah, but you don't have to... You, you can go... There's little hubs. So yeah. you'll be... It's like a big map, yeah. but each area has its own little missions you can do in there. So you can just take your time yeah. and do one little objective at a time and you unlock like flight paths. Like you can like take a quick helicopter from one area to the mm. next. So, while it's big, it's not big yeah. in the same way that Breath of the Wild is big. Yeah, I just feel like, you know, like we were talking about with Men in Black, it's like companies, they're like, what's accessible? What's popular now? Let's go for the open world. Let's go for the so, multiplayer. Let's go for the grindy kind of loot boxy kind of microtransaction-y experience. Uh, Whereas I just want to go back to that simpler time is what made Ghost Recon good? What made Rainbow Six good? Which is a single player tactical experience. Just wait until we see the Splinter Cell Battle Royale. Ah, uh, see, this, this is my point. Is like I don't yeah. think they're even bothering to make a new Splinter no. Cell because they're and like they, they teasing, probably they were, can't figure out how to turn it into a battle royale. And they got all the fans with blue balls before E3 because there was some fucking developer there teasing people, being like, "I'm working on the next Splinter yeah. Cell," and no, they're not. No, and and they're like, "Oh, well, technically we are because it's a mobile game." <sighs> I hate when they do and that it's shit. like. Basically pointless. Yeah. They're Sam fishing for money. Yeah. That's it. Um, <laughs> Death Loop. Did you see the trailer Death for Loop, that? Death Loop, big hype. By that the, looks really cool. It's by the Dishonored uh, uh, they developers. Did, so They also did Prey. Okay, yeah. The um, new Prey. I have no idea what that game's about. I just know yeah, that it looks interesting. Uh, so Look, Death the, Loop is about... No, two, I know what it's about. Yeah. I mean, what's it going to play like? Yeah, I mean, what's it's going to play, play like yeah. Dishonored and but, Prey. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that it lives... Like, the premise is interesting, but yeah, is it going to... How are they going to incorporate that yeah. idea into a game? Yeah. Like, yeah you played Dishonored. You yeah, play- but you die and then you come yeah, back but and that- you have to... How do you... It's just the loop is... Yeah, we'll, ha- we'll have are, to wait to see... Why are they fighting each other? We'll have to wait to see how they implement the story yeah. and the video game and the gameplay elements like together. The, the trailer like, did nothing for me. I need to know more. Yeah. Ghost of Tsushima uh, looks interesting. Well, see, I was really hyped for Ghost of Tsushima Ghost of Sushi last year... Um, and then there was like just nothing, no news. Like it just went dead. And then you, this year, like, did they? I don't think they even had a new trailer. They they did. They showed us it was CGI. But okay, they, there was yeah, a but trailer. there was no gameplay or no. anything. So, and but apparently it's supposed to be coming out soon. Yeah, we'll see. I doubt but, it. We'll see. Yeah, but I was like, I'm just like, I want to see more. I'm really interested yeah. in that game, so I'm hyped for that. But yeah, the so far there hasn't been any real big uh, reveals for that. Um. Gods and Monsters looks again. I saw I, like we saw a CGI scene. I don't. We don't know really. Know yeah. Anything. Well, it's by the Assassin's Creed Odyssey developers. It seems to be like a Breath of the Wild, but with Greek mythology kind of cartoony aesthetics. Could be interesting. Could be. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo. Yeah. By the Evil Within developers. Looks looks okay. Looks cool, creepy. Hopefully yeah. it'll be good kind oh. of horror experience. That's the game I was thinking about. I see Ghost of Tsushima. That's Go- a samurai Ghost game, Ghost of Tsushima right? is the samurai one. Never mind. I'm, I meant that Oh, you meant Ghostwire. Yeah. Okay, yeah. No, Ghostwire is the kind of ghost... Yeah, the yeah, supernatural... Yeah, no, we didn't see anything yeah. from Ghost of Tsushima. This Ghost year. of Tsushima, yeah. yeah, we didn't see anything. Um, um, that, that one looks good. Uh, Ghostwire, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that one looks interesting. I'll be interested to see how that... I'm assuming it's going to be similar to Evil Within... But I, I'm hoping there's some kind of new new elements to it. Um, Control, uh, I'm really, really hyped for this because Max Payne is my favorite game of all time. And Remedy, who made that, are making this. They didn't. They also made Alan Wake. Yeah, Alan, I was going to say, I'm more pumped because of Alan Wake than for yeah. Max Payne. I never are you played, serious? Max Alan Payne Wake is the is best a, game. Alan Wake is Quantum. amazing, man. No, it's, Alan Wake is amazing, but this is that just adds on top of the greatness of Remedy. I didn't play Quantum Break, so I... Quantum Break is interesting. I have it. I've just never played it. it I liked it. It's, I an, feel interest, like it's an interesting judge, experiment. I think you should always judge a developer for the last game they released. 
Well, especially considering the 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 revolving well, door that is a game development studio. You see, that's also a different thing because it's like Max Payne, amazing, my favorite game of all time. Max Payne Two, also amazing. Uh, Alan Wake, amazing. Then they start their partnership with Microsoft, and then Quantum Break comes out, which is like an experimental TV, you can forgive TV an experiment. video, yeah, TV video game hybrid, which is supposed to help sell the Xbox One. So it's kind of like, yes, it's their last game and maybe we should, like you said, judge them on their last game, but it's also an experimental game and it's also an experimental game where they partnered with Microsoft to sell a console, sort of. So it's not exactly the best indicator yeah, of... Because yeah. they were originally developing Alan Wake 2 before Ooh. Microsoft came on board and was like, nah, bruh, we want this TV you know, uh, thing hybrid to sell our console. and you know, Why so- should you live? So that's why I'm really hyped for Control because it seems to have similar gameplay elements to Quantum Break, to Alan Wake, to even Max Payne. It has Remedy's signature style, which I love, but also it's them in control and not a Microsoft. I mean, I I guess they might still have some sort of partnership with Microsoft. It's not a Microsoft exclusive as far as I know, Xbox. Yeah, but they're probably not using it to sell the console. My point is, yeah, it's not... It's not just another quantum break situation. Mm. This is a, their their remedy free reign, you know, to to do yeah. what they want. So I'm really hyped for it. Um, I didn't mention it last week because it's coming out in a couple of months. So I'm like, why is it even at E3? Just you know, like that's the problem with E3. It. Like they sometimes they just get it wrong and they show games that we don't want to know about games that coming out in March. Yeah, uh, we've I mean, seen that's all not the... necessarily true. No, it's like, yeah, I want to see a little bit more, but it's like, yeah, but we've already seen it's it. Like, yeah. Show us the worst new. is when they advertise a game that's already out. Like, yeah, that, that's happened a couple of times. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the worst in this E3 was probably e- EA, and they're just like, here's a new Sims Four expansion. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah. no, um, Bleeding Edge. Looks interesting, but... Mm. I'm so... Dis- Hell- Did you guys play Hellblade? No. A really, really great game. A really interesting indie that is, kind that's of... That's the game about mental health? Yeah, the that Viking... That was an indie game, right? Yeah. 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 It's like a small team. It's on the Switch. Um, the kind of, you know, a very interesting gameplay and uh, world and sort of different. Um, and so I was like, I can't wait to see what their next game is. But I think they partners partnered with Microsoft or someone. I'm not... I can't remember who, EA or Activision or whoever. Um, and now they're just making a co-op multiplayer game. And I'm like, well... It's, not even, it's that, not even that, that man. Uh, Those developers are dead. It's, it's, <laughs> that, it's, that, that company's gone. It's an Overwatch clone with swords. Yeah. I'd like... But that's like... You, you, the market has the kings already. You're not going to get anywhere yeah, close. Yeah, but like this, it it's like to, to come from that developer who's like made this really mm. interesting single-player experience and then it's like to, to, turn, to turn them, to pimp them out into this kind of, well, I'm just going to make a multiplayer. I, like, think, I think that so, was a misstep. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm going to, uh, knowing the way these, I'm no expert, but knowing the way these things go, that development team will break up. The name will stay with a company that's no longer yeah. what it used to be. And the other team members who leave will make a new company that makes more interesting games. Um, the Avengers game. Do you guys see that? Yeah, that's by Square, right? Uh, yeah. They were involved I, I I'm don't not, know how to feel about no, it. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not hyped. I'm, I'm, wait, I'm waiting. Yeah. Because I want to see more before more I gameplay. start shitting on no, it like yeah. everyone else. No, no. Why wait? People sh- Are we talking about the same one? The one yeah. The square? The square one. Yeah. I don't know the one where people are like, on. it's not based on the Marvel movies. Yeah. That's why I'm which, so excited. Yeah, which I yeah. actually think is a good thing, but it's Do also... Do you know how many more characters we can have? Yeah, but I think one of the things I'm critical of, and again, we haven't seen much, so is that it seems like they're... Trying to be the movies, but also not. Mm. And I'm like, just pick one. No, I'm I'm ha- I'm still Whereas, I'm happy as a picking shit. Yeah, I, I mean, mean I, I'm, I'm also not lie. We'll I'm also sit- hyped for the other Marvel game. Which one? Uh, Ultimate Alliance Three on the Switch. Oh, yeah, that also oh, looks good. That's yeah. no, I'm 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 happy with like, <laughs> I'm just happy. I think it's going to be really good. I think it's going to be really interesting because they also said that you buy the base game and all the updates they're not going to charge you for. So okay. they're gonna it's it's going to be a long running game from what mm. I understand like longer than a normal no, normal release so they had they, you get the base game mm. and then after like a certain episodes. amount of time there'll be a new expansion in quotation marks even though that's an MMO a new term ep- a new issue yeah exactly a new episode well, or whatever and it continuing the story and unlocking new characters hopefully as it goes yeah on. hopefully if they do that then they make it like a comic book or a comic book movie where it's yeah. like here's a new villain that you have to fight yeah and you can play with your friends 
Yeah, I'm just excited. Okay. See, that's the thing. Though. All like the hun- potentially a hundreds of characters are in the roster. Yeah. Potentially. We have no idea what the limitations and are. Have you seen but the... the, t- just, the Sorry, go on. The, the, the narrative arcs they can explore yeah. because they're not bound to the movies. Well, yeah, that's why I'm interested in it. I like, just think like they... I think they could have gone a little bit different with the designs because I think they're trying to be different, but they're also, you know... Trying to sort of appease the I can kind of, of movie crowd though, because keep in mind the movies make bank, yeah. and that we don't know what influence Marvel uh, has over the mm. development. Like they might have guidelines. Maybe that, you know yeah. you have to because this is successful. Well, apparently Marvel is really strict now. What they let through. Yeah, that's yeah, my point. So. so- we don't know if maybe they were forced yeah. into this. We don't know. Maybe they said you can't go too comic booky. Mm. You have to have some influence on the movie so people know yeah. it's a Marvel well, branded yeah. product. Play it safe. On yeah. this, on a comic book note, uh, unrelated to E3, have you guys seen the apparent tweet? Marvel Comics tweeted like a mysterious four. Oh, yeah, it's a countdown. Like, they also webbing. tweeted a three. Oh, there was another three. People yeah, were speculating no, it was, a it was going to be a Sam Raimi sort of f- fourth movie in kind of comic book. Oh, a comic but book Apparently, version. that's no, not it's, 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 it's a countdown. No one knows what the countdown's okay. for yet, so yeah, stay maybe tuned. This, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the, Sony wasn't at uh, E3, but uh, there's been some news or rumors about the PS5 being backwards compatible, which I think... That's confirmed. Okay, so yeah. that, that's at least really with good. Ju- at least with PS4. Yeah, that's really good that's because... Exciting. Yeah, it's like my, my consoles are all stacked up. I've got no more room, yeah. so I can't have a PS4 and a PS5 The good thing about the PS4 other. 5 is if you play a PS4 Pro game, yeah. is that if you put a PS4 game in, you take advantage of all the PS4 Pro features. So, yeah. like, the PS5 oh, has, like... And, yeah. and more. Yeah, so yeah, the PS5 more, has, like, yeah. 4K out the box and all yeah. this business, so... So, that'll that's a, be good for... That's a tick in the box. Yeah, because I've still got the original PS4, not the Pro. Yeah, I'm not yeah. upgrading so now. I'll wait. If if I know that the PS5 is uh, backwards compatible, then, yeah, I'll just swap my PS4 out for the PS5, and now I can play my PS4 you games also, at the you Pro. Can, you, can also tra- you can also change over uh, save data, so you can take your... Oh, that's If cool. you upload your PS4 save data, I'm pretty sure there's been talk of being able to just download that on your PS4. It's compatible digitally, too. Yeah, Nathan, yeah. you also said digi- games you bought on the mm-hmm. online store... Transfer. Complete, that's, complete, that's complete what, backwards compatibility with PS4 software. So what I'm worried about is they announced the Xbox Scarlet or Project Scarlet, which I'm assuming the name will change. Um, and I'm hoping they do the same thing because, like I said, I can't fit an Xbox mm. One and a Scarlet on top of each other. Like I don't have any room. But uh, I think if I'm going to have to yeah. keep, if I'm going to have to keep both to play both games, like. Yeah. I think Microsoft will do the same thing. Especially I hope because so. modern consoles have so much in common with computers. I think backwards yeah, compatibility I, is going to get easier and easier yeah, the further I'm, we go. I'm hoping, yeah, I'm hoping that that's the case, that as they go, it's just easier for them to run whatever was the previous version. Whereas, Also, game development software is more open now. Yeah. Like, like All the studios probably use variations of one of the big... Yeah. Like, you know, uh, or if not a com- a- available commercially, there might be one that all the big studios use and share and lease out to each other. Because yeah. I know some studios do lease out their software. Mm, so, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, so, now is a, it's a good time now to be buying your PS4 games. Yeah, stock up. Stock up. <laughs> that's what I meant. I bought yeah. a few that I, I saw. Well, like, I'm not going to play them now, but I will play the them on my like, PS5. I'm going to get their stranding, but I'm not going to buy a PS4 Pro to just to get the best of out of it. Yeah. But then I know if I get the PS5 can slap him Death Stranding and get the best experience yeah, exactly. of that later on. Um, so we're running out of time, but just a couple of things I want to mention. I finished A Plague Tale Innocence. Was it good? I really liked it. Good. I would recommend it. I'll borrow it off like, sometime. Yeah, if you like story-driven, single-player... Is it difficult? No. Uh, I, d- I, di- I died a lot, but, you know, you there's lots of generous checkpoints, and yeah, once you get used to things... Um, can be frustrating at times, but all games have that. But yeah, I really Damn like rats. this. I like the yeah, I like the story. I like the characters. I like the designs. Um, it has that Last of Us kind of, you know, two two characters in the wilderness kind of going up against you know, uh, in the black the plague. Yeah, insurmountable sometimes, odds and you know sometimes it's a marvel where even here, man. The black plague <laughs> killed so many people. <laughs> Our descendants got lucky. Yeah. Well, what I like about the game is, yeah, it's set in like medieval France, but it's like a really heightened, not not fantasy, like low fantasy version where the there are plague rats, but like see like an ocean of them, like and you can, and the one of the characters can control them, and it's like it's like a more heightened fantastical version. Like there's the Inquisition who are like knights, um, but they've got like. Thorn, like metal thorns on their boots and gauntlets like it's a very like it's it's there's no like 
there's no dragons or anything like that. It's like a medieval yeah, game, but low it's, fantasy, it's yeah. a very low. I like that kind of uh, alternate history version of plague. You know, plague infested France, medieval France. Uh, I really liked it. I liked the story. I recommend it. Um, we're on our time, but I just want to mention Black Mirror season five. I liked all three episodes. I thought they were all really good. Some people didn't like the last episode, which is the Miley Cyrus episode. I thought that was really good. I thought it was funny. I like we were talking about a couple of weeks ago where Twilight Zone is just not strong. It's not strong enough. The writing is not good enough. They need to focus on quality over quantity. Black Mirror is the prime example of that where Charlie Brooker, who's a genius who writes all these episodes, is just like, yeah, only getting three, but they're going to be damn good. Each episode is not not just in performance and, and, and production value, but like just the writing is tight. And I don't know how deep you want to delve into this, but apparently there was an Easter egg of as to the true ending of Bandersnatch. I didn't know that. Um, and there's like a news ticker thing in one of the episodes down the bottom. It has um, Colin's character... Um, Okay. Band snatch, like he's still missing. Oh, like the news. Okay. Yeah, and so people have sort of ruled some endings out of Bandersnatch because yeah. it's technically like they're referencing it in another episode. Yeah. So if you want to dig into, so there's that, like a Black Mirror canonical ending, kind of mm. in, in a way. Uh, in, in a way, it might just be an Easter. It's, it's just probably an Easter just, egg. It's just a fun yeah. Easter egg. Um, but that's interesting to think about. Yeah. At least Charlie Brooker has some endings in mind. Yeah. Um, but it's only three episodes, so you can sp- smash it out. It's like a long movie. Um, and he, I liked it every episode. Um, Jessica, Jessica Jones season three, I liked it. I think it was better than season two. Did it Did it um, resolve everything nicely? Well, not really, because it's technically not supposed to be the end. Even though it is, it was never supposed to be the end. So they do yeah. set a few things up. But yeah, it kind of resolves some things. Um, but yeah, like I liked it. I thought it was good. So people have been shitting on it. Yeah, I think it's, if, it's a Netflix original. If it, so. if it had to end here, like it wasn't, like it wasn't a bad place to end. It's just for me, it's really sad that these shows ended now. You know, especially because Daredevil season three was so good, and I like Jessica Jones season three, and Luke Cage season two. I think yeah. ended in a really interesting place, and so they, they should have had one more season to round things off. Yeah, like, like Marvel should have said, "We're going to give you one yeah. more." Or Marvel, well, it wasn't up to yeah, Marvel, or like it was up ne- to Netflix. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, but I think way. that's the, that's the ultimate kind of most disappointing thing is like it's I really just, why it's really did sad. It. Yeah, it's just really sad and disappointing that they had these really strong shows, and we're not going to see anything like this from Disney, even if it's on Hulu, even if it's a sort of more gritty uh, take on characters. We're not going to see anything like it. No. I don't think, at least not for quite a long time. So mm. it's just disappointing that we don't get to see this version of these beloved characters. And we have to go into the kind of I love Marvel, like I say, I always say, but we're gonna get the <laughs> we're gonna get the safe kind of Marvel yeah. uh, MCU uh, trickle down TV and version, not of the it. Marvel Knights version we all want. Yeah, so bad. I want a Moon Knight Netflix series, man. I'm so, <laughs> oh man, at, look, at least we have Umbrella Academy and we have Miller. Yeah, World. exactly. And there's a lot of other interesting stuff coming out on Amazon and Netflix, kind of adult the boys. oriented, the boys and stuff like that. So. Um, yeah, uh, hype for that, but yeah, it's sad that the Netflix shows are now truly dead. Um, and the Chernobyl miniseries on HBO is fucking awesome. Russia doesn't agree with you, 11, sir. <laughs> 11 out of 10. Russia thinks it's fake news. It's so good. They're making their own counter TV show. Which, which no one forth, will watch. Which, forth, which puts, puts forth the premise that it was the CIA that did it. <laughs> I'm not, even, I'm not even joking. I, I, I haven't watched so. it. My dad, our dad loved it. Oh, watch it, man! It's so yeah, good. Um, uh, it's only did, five episodes. I did read the authenticity is yeah. incredible. It's like, like a they, horror movie. It's just like so. The, the but atten- it's apparently, like so... From, from what I've read about the show, the attention to detail is so incredible. Like they found, yeah. like specific brands of like yeah. household especially, appliances yeah. that they use to the time in yeah. the area, especially and, because it's you know set. In Ukraine, like Soviet Russia, Soviet era Ukraine, like in Chernobyl, like to recreate that would be so difficult. And they did such a good job. HBO shows always have great production value, but this is like top notch. And you know, on top of that, you got the performances and the music is amazing. And yeah, just the the unfolding of the events and the kind of horror movie, disaster movie lots aspect of, to it. Lots of da, da. But also the kind of um, dra- character drama aspect to it. 
And I think there's very little does. I think they all speak English. Like, yeah, no, English. everyone has like English, English accents. Oh, yeah. That's kind of disappointing. But um, no, but it, it's good. All, yeah. the, all the actors are really good. Um, and like the show is just so good. But on top of that, then you get the memes. And the, <laughs> meme, the memes that have come out of this show, which is very serious, very dramatic, um, very like emotionally impactful. It's just so funny. <laughs> like I just... The internet is the best and worst thing to ever happen to humankind. On one hand, it's this horrible, disgusting, you know, mosh pit of like, you know, Sin. awfulness. Yeah. <laughs> and on the other hand, it's like bringing people together to make jokes about TV shows, you know, to well, make like. It lets us rant into the ether. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and some people care, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Uh, the, at least one per- per- yeah. person cares. Shout out to Elise. <laughs> And also my dad listens, so. <laughs> Hi, dad. Um, but yeah, uh, do you guys want to mention anything else? We always, like, I always have a hundred other things to talk about, no, but I we don't have good. enough time. Uh, so there's a Dark Crystal video game being made. Uh, yeah, Tactical but it's RPG. like a, it's like a turn uh, based stuff. Yeah. But, uh, like, so as I was saying, I think. Was I love I saying, Muppets making a comeback. Was it? Uh, well, don't we, we haven't talked about the Dark Crystal series yet um mm-hmm. so i hyped for that yeah but i think i was telling nathan i'm like if they made a dark crystal video game in the sort of same way as breath of the wild like open world adventure like i would be 210 percent down yeah but it's like a sort of turn paced kind of, turn based kind of tactical it's like uh, yeah. it's almost like a mobile game like no it's a tactical rpg yeah so, but i was yeah. like you know it's not for me it's i'm not you know getting yeah, but the tv no. show looks good I can't yeah. wait. I bought it. We bought it, on, we bought it on Blu-ray. Yeah, uh, we'll, today. We'll, we'll, in the kids section, we'll watch the. <laughs> well, yeah, for, I had to get. Yeah, I had to get Labyrinth out of the kids section. And I was like, "Do you know how scary this shit is?" <laughs> <laughs> Same with Dark Crystal. This shit is nightmare fuel. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll have to probably watch the original again and uh, talk about it on the show, and then watch the series and talk about. Or well, even though it's a prequel, so but you know, it's all good. I'm excited. It's good. All right, that's it. Enough. That's enough. I think it's Callum's turn. Thank you for listening. Like and share the Tuesday Review Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at Tuesday Review AU. Follow James on Instagram at Channel Drifter. You can find our previous episodes on your favorite podcasting app. If you like video games, check out Element Jake's show Sunrise Arcade. If you like car talks, <laughs> I'm sorry. If you like discu- automotive if you like discussions. discussing automotive issues yeah please check out maddie j's show car talk t-o-r-q-u-e yeah make sure to rate review and subscribe to the tuesday review on itunes adios cousins